May 2020 school board meeting. Uh, so if we could all um, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Pat Grudy, President. Pledge of Allegiance. United States, States of America. America. And to the republic, and to the republic for which it stands, it stands. Yeah. one nation, one nation, under God, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Dying to hear how that sounds on the recording. Okay, uh, roll call, please. Jim Batson here. Don Carmichael here. Pat Grudy here. Lisa Hessel here. Kevin Huber. Here. Karen Lundstead. Here. Casey Rooney. Here. Okay, so all the members are present. Um, let's take a look at the agenda. Uh, we will open up for public comment. I believe we do have some. Is that correct? We have two, Pat, tonight. I'll read into the record. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and then we will honor our outgoing student school board representatives and welcome our new <clears throat> uh, and get up to from both schools. We'll have the superintendent report covers a number of items. We'll approve the consent vote agenda, which we reviewed last week. Pat Grudy, president. And then uh, brief updates from program and personnel and facilities and finance. All right. Anything, Karen from Cedal? Yes, brief uh, update. And Jim, anything from ISB? Not today. Okay. All right. Anything else? Right, so let's open up for public comment. Prentice Lee, superintendent. Okay, uh, as the board knows, we received um, two messages over the weekend and uh, both requested to be uh, part of public comment. So I'm going to read them into the record. They both relate to uh, COVID-19 and the reopening of school, and I'll have some more uh, comments on um, that in the superintendent's report. So we'll hold off on that. Uh, the first one is from uh, Vincent and uh, Mia Boom, <clears throat> and the message says, Dear, Dear 128 School Board, thank you for creating a public comment forum and for continuing to conduct these meetings remotely. We are writing to you today as parents of an 11th grader going into his senior year for the 2020-2021 school year. Our son's e-learning experience at Libertyville High School has been in ineffective. E-learning will not be an effective learning mechanism for my son, and we expect most children. Going to school is an experience through the education they receive as well as the interactions with students, teachers, coaches, and the administration. Traditionally, online learning has been effective for older, more mature adults balancing responsibilities between work and family. Expecting high school students to gain an effective education through remote learning is unreasonable and, and it has been demonstrated that is detrimental to our students' well-being. Much of what has been overlooked within the recent decisions rendered by our state and our local school districts has been a long-term mental health impact to our children. The absence of a structured social environment where students have access to classroom learning, clubs, activities, and sports has been completely stripped away. The shutdown mentality has created a shut-in mentality for our children and your D128 students. We have embraced fear rather than explored fact and have recoiled into the abyss of a constant state of anxiety. Senator Rand Paul, a physician, recently stated, and the statistics are consistent, the virus has little effect on those under 18. It approaches 0%. That being said, there are many families who are concerned about sending their kids to school and the intention, uh, potential impact of the virus on their health. I'm confident our leaders have the knowledge and skills to find options to support these families while making the classroom environment available to the rest of the students. The mission of District 128 is to develop graduates who are daring. Uh, you even reference Maya Angelou, success is loving life and daring to live. Are we teaching our students to be daring by keeping them home and locked up in fear? So as you look forward to next school year and formulate plans of action and a safe return to school, please consider the long-term impact of a poor mental health environment. School is inspiring. School is the foundation for turning today's students into tomorrow's intellectuals. School preserves mental stability and promotes maturity in a social environment. School matters. We need to give our children hope for the future, follow the mission statement, and teach them to live daringly. Vincent and Mia Boom, parents of a District 128 student. The second... Um, 
message for public comment tonight is from Sue Sarah. And Sue's message says, hi all, I'm wondering if one or all of you might be able to share your thoughts and plans on opening up summer camps in Vernon Hills and Libertyville High Schools. I've seen the options and partial entry plan to let kids back in. However, anything less than getting our kids back into school feel full time feels dreadful. I think, I know, our community has been very diligent about staying at home for over two and a half months. If we look at raw statistics with our political or media skew, my opinion is that keeping kids out of camps and schools will have far more of a negative impact than a positive impact at this point. Vernon Hills population just under 27,000, 115 recorded cases of COVID. This is a 0 .004 rate. Libertyville stats are even lower, 70 reported cases out of a population of 19,923 residents, 0.0035%. While all of us in the community totally appreciate our schools for adapting uh, to any learning program, I think we can all agree it is not even close to the instruction kids get in the classroom. Without allowing kids to attend camps or school, how are we, forgive me as I turn the page, how are we residents supposed to go back to work? People don't have childcare. I can give you hundreds of names of families in which both parents work and depend on camps and school to permit those schedules to happen. I understand we have state mandated orders, but I feel we as a community should have a choice. Do we have a choice as a community? As a school district with such few cases, residents should have the choice to send their kids to schools and camps. If folks are afraid, have health conditions, or otherwise, then I, by all means, they should have the right to still stay home and educate from home. Gloves and masks should also be options for anyone not comfortable. Please tell me how extending all this another month or into the fall is a benefit to the 26,880 uh, residents who have not even, who have not had the virus. And even if that number of 115 cases is low and more, more folks had it that didn't get tested, our numbers are still low. Many of us realize this is a very difficult situation for you all, uh, but giving people a choice seems like the most fair and reasonable approach. We can all sign waivers removing any liability from the district, but we can't go through this again next year and every year that colds, flu, and viruses emerge again. This can't be an annual thing. It's just not sustainable. Please let me know if there is a board meeting residents can attend to voice our concerns. I know I sound frustrated with all of you, but it's not you. It's this whole thing with a smiley face behind that. I apologize if my tone is agitated. Respectfully, Sue, Sarah. And um, I, as the board received those communications, I responded on behalf of the board to uh, both of the parents today. So uh, those are the public comments, Pat. Okay. That's it, right? That's it. Okay. All right. So let's uh, move on to the present. Board, and we'll start by honoring our outgoing um, <laughs> representative. So I don't know whether everybody knows this, but this morning, Rudy, President, uh, we had a great excuse to get out of the house, which I very much appreciate it. Um, but we went and visited all of our outgoing school board reps, and one of them was there. Uh, thank you for this. Yeah. So it was a great morning, a great chance to see everybody. Um, I want to say thanks again to everybody for a job extremely well done. You guys, you know, and I say this every year, not because I just say it every year, but you continue to raise the bar um, with respect to um, how you perform in the role of the uh, student school board rep. So we're, we're grateful for your perspectives and, and all of your hard work. And, you know, I also can't help but comment. Every time I walked up to a door today, I was amazed. There was usually, number one, there was the uh, graduating uh, class signs. So to everybody that do, did those, I thought that was a great job. I love driving around town seeing all those signs. But then in a lot of the homes, there's either the Cougar or the Wildcat sign with all the different things that you guys are involved in. Um, we might end up having to make those signs bigger because some of you are starting to run out of space to put your little stakes in um, for all the different things you're in. So um, for me, it's always just so inspiring. And then for all of you, you're doing some great things next year. Um, Oh, yeah, there's a picture of some this morning. Pat Grudy, president. So this is called Plaques by Social Distancing. That was, a, it was, that was really a lot of fun. So um, 
that's all I want to say. I'd like to open it up to our uh, six departing representatives and maybe ask you guys for a couple closing comments on how your year was. Who wants to go first? Um, real, real short, just real short. Yeah. Um, so I'm really grateful that I've had the chance to be here for two years um, and getting to know you folks on the board a little bit more. Um, this year has seriously been amazing and I'm so grateful for how long how well we all got along. Um, the board reps from Liberty Bell and Vernon Hills. Um, and I'm just so incredibly grateful for getting to have this opportunity. Yeah. Okay, great job. Yeah, just building off of that, um, it was awesome to get a really behind the scenes look at all the work that goes into um, you know, running a school district and creating a calendar and all that stuff that you wouldn't even really think about. And just getting to know all of the board members and the other board reps from Libertyville was a really awesome experience. So thank you for everything. Yeah, I think this is one of the most rewarding, um, like, extracurriculars I've done at school and, like, leadership positions. And it's so cool to see, like, the behind the scenes because, as Abby said, like, you just never think of how this all gets put together and how it works. And I really enjoyed getting to know the Liberty Bell rooms. It was so cool when we got to, like, shadow each other at the schools. Great. Yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this and I learned so much and I thought it was amazing that we got to see not only um, like the behind, scene, the behind the scenes into the calendar committee and um, watching Amal, who's here, um, work to get Eid um, as, a, as a holiday pass. That was incredible to see, but also just working through all um, issues that, that this um, district sees and just being able to see how we're able to resolve things together and it's been really really educational and I had a great time. Good. Thank you for allowing us students to be a part of the school board. It's really cool to see how the community works together between the different schools and I really like making three new friends from Libertyville and shadowing their days and it's really cool to talk about um, how our schools and communities have grown and being a part of those conversations at the board meetings. Thank you so much for um, allowing us to be on the board. And I'm so honored that I've gotten this opportunity. It's something that I look forward to every single month and just rave about every single month. Um, I'm so glad that, um, that like we got to shadow the Vernon Hills reps and we got to be so close to them. And it's just such a blessing. Thank you. All right. Great job. And thanks again to all of you guys. One other thing I'd like to add, so usually at this time of year, I remember Dr. Lee and his graduation remarks always takes time to thank the parents uh, during the graduation ceremony. So we're not going to be able to get to all the kids here, obviously, but we can get to at least the six of you guys. Uh, that was the other thing that was fun this morning is as we went house to house, um, usually mother, father, or both were there and excited, complete with cameras and everything. Um, I'd just like to uh, ask you guys, when you go home tonight, say thanks to your parents for raising such great kids and, uh, you know, really playing, I think, an instrumental role in helping you become the person you've become so far, okay? Um, knowing that you've got uh, big steps you're taking here over the next couple of months. But it was a lot of fun to meet your folks. Great to see you guys again. And we certainly wish you all the best in your fantastic endeavors next year. Karen Lundstedt, Secretary. All right. Congrats to all of you guys. We, we really just so enjoyed uh, being with you this year and all that you brought to the table every month. And uh, just wish you all the best uh, in going forward. I know you'll have great things ahead. Don Carmichael, yeah. School Board. Anybody else want to say anything? Congratulations. And uh, you've really set the bar high for the, the new students who are coming in to take your place. Uh, I think in some ways it's probably a good thing that they didn't see you in action because uh, <laughs> they, they've got some work in front of them. <laughs> Francis Lee, superintendent. Uh, Pat, I, I would add just on behalf of John and Tom, who of course can speak for themselves and you, um, the community may not know that uh, we have the great honor of meeting with the students once a month uh, during the school year for lunch, although we weren't able to do that in March and April and May this year. Um, and uh, those hour, hour and a half lunches with 
uh, our board representatives are very enjoyable for us and probably even more important are very instructive for us uh, as we're able to get uh, to know uh, the representatives, um, you know, on a more personal level, uh, but also get their insights uh, into a number of things that the buildings may be working on or the district is working on, and we're very appreciative of that. So just on behalf of all of us, we really um, respect you for who you are and what you've done. And of course, we wish you the best. And if you ever need anything, all you have to do is reach out to us and we'll be glad to help you. Pat Grudy, president. Okay, great job. Thank you very much, everybody. So next, uh, let's welcome the new student school board reps. And because I did not participate in this process, I'm gonna turn it over to um, uh, the people that did interview, right? Karen and Casey. Uh, maybe you guys can help introduce our new, our new people. And talk a little bit about the process for anybody that wasn't there. Casey Rooney School Board. Sure. Um, thank you again for allowing me to be part of the process. Uh, it was fantastic to meet all of the kids. They were, you're, you're all amazing. Um, the commitment that you have to your community, to your school, your studies, it, it is extremely impressive. Um, I was lucky enough to interview some very impressive kids at Vernon Hills High School. So um, welcome to Diego and Ava and Kayla and really excited to hear from you guys over the next year and hear how your senior year is going and what your peers are doing. Karen Lundstedt, secretary. Yes, and I had the privilege of uh, meeting with so many uh, great candidates um, at Libertyville and it's just always a privilege and such a joy to see the breadth of representation that comes to those meetings and uh, we've got some great great student board reps uh, in line for next year and and just appreciated getting to know you I think you all bring such unique um, things to the table uh, and we'll be enjoying hearing from you each each month and hearing your perspectives and actually watching your uh, relationships grow with one another that's one of the really fun things about this as as your predecessors alluded to in their comments uh, it's really neat to see how uh, that camaraderie and teamwork builds between you from each school, but then again, with all six of you as well. So welcome uh, to Quinn, welcome to Amal and Marilyn. And we're just looking so forward to uh, working with you this year. Welcome. All right, great. So uh, let me just ask uh, each of the new people to uh, introduce themselves. I don't know how we're going to coordinate this. Um, Tell us uh, what school you're from and what year, what year you're in, and then throw in one other thing you want us to know about you. Diego, why don't we start with you? Hello, everyone. So I'm Diego. I'm going to be a senior this year at Vernon Hills, and I am really involved, I would say, with music and public speaking are my two big things. And I enjoy powerlifting as well. Those are my three interests. Awesome. Maybe we'll give you some experience in some public speaking. <laughs> Okay. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Quinn. I'm going to be a senior at Libertyville, and uh, I'm really involved in athletics, and I'm on the soccer team and the athletic leadership board. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, let's say Eva. Hi, I'm Eva. I go to Vernon Hills. I'm going to be a senior. Um, I'm a violinist, and I am on my girl, my school's girls track and field team. Very good. Quinn and Diego, I, I didn't catch it. Both seniors? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Kayla? Let's see who's next on that screen here. Hi, okay. I'm Kayla. And I'll be a senior next year at Vernon Hills High School. And something um, important about me is I'm very interested in environmental rights and environmental activism. Very good. Uh, we got a couple projects we could use your input on there. You'll fit right in. <laughs> Who else do I have here? Who's next? Who would like to go? I'll go. There you go. Um, my name is Amal, and I'm going to be a senior at Libertyville High School next year. And I'm just so excited to be working with all of you. And um, my biggest passion right now is student council, so I'm on Stuco exec board. And just fun times. Awesome. Great. Welcome. All right, last but not least. Hello, my name is Marilyn. Sorry, my camera is not working, but um, 
I'm going to be a senior next year at Libertyville High School, and one thing about me is that I love to run, and I'm actually signed up to run the Chicago Marathon this year if it's not canceled. Good. We're hoping, we're hoping that you get a chance to run there. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everybody. Um, who's going to do the updates for this month? I can Pat, start. We got every, Pat, we got everybody right. I think we got everybody right. Okay. Two, four, six. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ella, did you say you're going to go first? Yep. We want to say thank you um, for dropping off our plaques this morning. We really appreciated um, this token um, for spending the school year with all of you. So we want to say thank you. Um, also, parents and students have created a staff appreciation video to give their thanks to all the teachers and staff who work so hard every day, especially now. And additionally, students wrote more than a thousand emails to staff to say thank you. And the teachers were very uplifted by these messages. Senior Carter Sherwin recently published an article in the Daily Herald about the disappointments of missing out on things due to the current situation what life in quarantine is like, and how hope can be found through perseverance in this difficult time. Construction is continuing at VHHS. Currently, the contractors are working on connecting the catwalk from the UC to the new dance facility. This has shifted operations a bit as now door number two will serve as the main entrance. For anyone entering the building, a mask is mandatory and gloves are strongly encouraged to keep everyone safe and healthy. Congratulations to special education teacher Karen Martin for receiving the Distinguished Service Award from the Illinois Directors of Student Activities Organization. She was recognized for her contributions to Vernon Hills High School student activities as she served as the Best Buddies advisor for 13 years. The Best Buddies program is very influential as it serves to create meaningful connections and lifelong memories between students. Congratulations to the Vernon Hills Science team. They took first place in the academic challenge in the engineering and science sectional competition. They took the test at their homes through a secured website last week. The following individuals placed in one or both of their events. Itamar Schifrin, first place in biology. Esther Cha, first place English. Hannah Liu, second place computer science. Lisa Bamer, second place math. Melody Thyme, third place English. Rhea Verma, second place biology. Timur Arsentiv, third place computer science. William Dai, third place computer science. Wei Ao Zhao, third place physics. The team will prepare to compete against the other top schools in the state, and the team is coached by Mr. Ravenscraft and Ms. Staub. Vernon Hills administration presented some very helpful webinars to help keep students and parents up to date during this time. Students heard information from Dr. G, Dr. Beagle, and Ms. Bolito. Some important announcements included that seniors would be able to stop by the school on June 1st and 2nd to drop off any school materials they had and pick up a special present. Additionally, this weekend there will be a senior farewell drive-by where seniors will get the chance to safely say goodbye to all of their teachers. And this year, for the first time ever, seniors will be able to decorate their graduation caps. The results of the Future as Leaders of America State Leadership Conference were announced through a live stream this past week. VHHS was recognized for having the fourth largest chapter in Illinois for the 2019-2020 school year. Congratulations to Vernon Hills High School's 38 national qualifiers who will comp compete virtually later this summer. Congratulations to the following elected 2020-2021 Executive Board members of Junior State of America, President Brandon Carrito, Vice President Brandon Newman, Director of Activism, Diego Corrales, Director of Debate, Aaron Kim, Director of Publicity, Ariel Schifrin, and Director of Fundraising, Evelyn Leary. Pending board approval, there will be 12 new staff members joining the Cougar family. It is a unique situation being that most of them have only met the administration virtually and have never actually set foot in our building yet. Still, we know that VHHS will welcome them with open arms. Rebecca Hessler, Ria Rathod, Carly Sear, and Wei Ao Zhao were the recipients of the Jesse Goldsmith Memorial Scholarship. They were surprised at their homes by Dr. G, Mrs. Bolito, and Ms. Fuentes, along with Police Deputy, Deputy, Deputy Chief Zimmerman, Commander Williams, and SRO Rodriguez. Congratulations to these four deserving seniors. The Scratching Post came out with their virtual senior issue this past week. 
It featured fan favorites, such as a list and a map of where seniors are headed next year, as well as some features on our future college student athletes and students pursuing a unique path in college. We applaud and thank the TSP members for continuing on this tradition, even from home. The issue also covered what e-learning is like for students. Originally, BHHS students were planning on putting on a production of Clue in front of a live audience, but due to the virus, plans needed to be shifted. Therefore, BHHS's Backlight Theater Company presented a radio version of the play recorded from their homes. We are proud of our students for coming up with a unique solution during this unprecedented time. To celebrate our seniors, graduation signs were delivered to their homes. A local business made sure that every senior was able to receive one. Over 225 signs were delivered by 40 enthusiastic VHHS staff volunteers. Because we can't have the honors assembly in person this year, a video feature featuring all of the award winners is being sent out in four parts. Congratulations to all of the seniors who have worked hard in high school to earn these awards and scholarships. Thanks to so many of you who have donated to our food supply and food bank. Your, gener your generosity is greatly appreciated. We are in need of a final push heading into the end of the year. Please consider dropping off supplies at the school. There is no need to come into school. Just drop the items in the vestibule of either door number one or door number two between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. While we will gladly take what you can offer, um, there are some items that are in higher need. In total, VHHS has given away 620 meals, hundreds of bags of supplies, and over $10,000 in gift cards and cash donations. All right. Did you know that May is Asian Pacific American Month and Jewish American Heritage Month? Both groups have contributed so much to our community and they should be celebrated not only this month, but all year around. Traditionally, our saga, the Sexuality and Gender Acceptance Club hosts a day of solidarity in the spring where we invite the school community, students and staff to show support and pledge allyship within the LGBTQ plus community. This year, they did it virtually, so on Friday, May 15th, staff and student were invited to wear red at home or use red fonts in Google, or just like red slides in Google Slides, to show their solidarity. In a time where so many people have made positive contributions to our school system, we really appreciate those who took the time to be intentional, and we wanted to say thanks. This award of the You Make a Difference Award was a digital one. Amy Dillon and Sandy Martin deserve our gratitude for putting it together. Congratulations to building and grounds and security teams, Amanda Carroll, Jessica Chapman, Garrett Gustav, Steve Zabo, Andrew Young, Anna Duros, Jill Schwartz, Sean Healy, Tiffany Highline, Heather Henry, the IT department, Sherry Jordan, Veronica Lucille, Nora McMerman, Allison Malloy, and Elizabeth Sierra. This week, we celebrate 10 Vernon Hills High School students as the recipients of the Cougar Class Act Awards. The ceremony was held digitally, and this defines what it means like to live in the D-128 Deering mission. Thanks to our teachers for taking the time to nominate the students. Many groups get creative in ways that they are trying to bring closure to the end of the school year. There are too many to mention, but here are some of the highlights. The choir members created a moving virtual choir performance. There is an orchestra, or an orchestra's video tribute to all the performers that didn't get a chance to do it on stage this spring. The volleyball and badminton teams implemented drive-by senior recognition events, and our soccer team put together a tribute video for the seniors. Our art department posted two shows, uh, an e-art slideshow and an AP e-art slideshow. Our sophomore, Shania Weinstein, has been 3D printing mask clips, and those are used to protect the backs of people's ears from chafing when masks are worn for too long. She has printed somewhere between 100 and 150 mask clips so far, and is still going. Her mom and dad work in the healthcare department and spend many time at nursing homes. So she started by supplying her mother and father and their coworkers, and then her mom posted on Facebook where it got huge recognition, and now she has given them to hospitals, nursing homes, police departments, and community members. Roughly four years ago, our senior Madison Johnson started her own nonprofit organization called The Little Helpers. The organization is dedicated to helping those in need with a donation of a blessing bag full of essential items. When COVID-19 hit, Madison felt the urge to help protect those on the front lines. She began to make masks for family and friends who were working and needed the the help of social media, the word got out and people began ordering personalized masks. As a Vernon Hills softball player, Madison created masks with the Vernon Hills softball logo and she donated them to several of the coaches and the players. 
From there, she began making them for nurses, construction workers, and other frontline workers. Madison has donated around 200 masks at this time and is happy to keep making more. Thanks, guys. All right, how about Jess? Um, so beginning last week, students have been taking their online AP tests. Um, teachers have been rapidly adapting their end of year plans to help students prepare for the new format of AP tests. Though a small number of students, mostly seniors, who learned that their college won't accept certain credits, chose to opt out of certain tests um, after they learned that the school would provide full refunds, most students are going forward with the tests. With one week of um, testing completed and two to go, there are already many experiences to report with the testing. Students who took uh, physics one, physics C, computer science, chemistry, calculus, among others, have faced technical issues that resulted in their inability to submit the tests. This is sadly a huge issue as it means that those students now will have to choose between retaking tests or choosing to get a refund and not receive a score. Fortunately, most students have had smooth experiences with the online format. The past Tuesday, the Sierra Day Google Hangouts held by the CRC with Mrs. Belster and Mrs. Cardinelli. Students were able to, oh wait, sorry, is my audio cutting out? Okay. Um, okay, so just to backtrack a little bit, just in case if that cut out for anyone, um, there was a great turnout for the Decision Day Google Hangout held in the CRC with, Ms., or held by the CRC with Mrs. Belster and Mrs. Cardinelli. Students were able to pop in and out, chat about future plans, and just hang out with their classmates online. It was a touching gesture to give seniors a chance to come back together with their beloved CRC staff. And to recreate the map of where seniors' future plans will take them, the CRC sent out a digital map on which seniors can, pin, um, can add a digital pin and a personal note. Dr. Nelson, Ms. Boston, and the COVID-19 Senior Task Force have also been working to organize Cats Connect for the past few weeks. Cats Connect is an online program that they're organizing um, over a series of few weeks uh, in which students can join to participate in like chats or activities virtually with some of their favorite teachers and staff from around the school. It has been an amazing opportunity for students to just hang out with some of their favorite teachers and catch up and it has been especially popular among seniors. Everyone has really loved having the opportunity to reconnect with others and we want to thank those involved in the organization for all of their hard work. Um, moving on to athletics, some our athletic camp activities have been put on hold as of right now. Um, one of the athletic trainers, Faith, has already been holding online workouts with the dance and swim teams. Soccer workouts are currently being planned and the department hopes that weekly workouts will be able to happen virtually soon. Uh, the dance studio that was being built in the space of the old swimming pool is almost complete. Although students are not there to celebrate in person, all the dancers are so excited about the upcoming years and the new possibilities with the space. Our school magazine, Drops of Ink, has been staying active in publishing new, new stories and videos online every week. We're so grateful for their informative reporting and the positivity that they bring during this time. We want to extend a huge congratulations to the entire staff for being named the best overall publication by the Illinois Journalism Education Association's Newspaper and Digital News Media Contest. Also, a special shout out to the 16 students who were individually recognized by the organization. Um, Dr. K uh, held a senior meeting last week, and um, we just wanted to report some of the things that we learned from that. So Dr. K, Mrs. Kruckman, and the rest of the faculty have been trying their hardest to give the senior class updates and plans during these uncertain times. And the entire class is so grateful and appreciative of it all. The first thing that is planned is having a senior teach, uh, teacher goodbye parade. It will take place on May 23rd at 10.30, um, and it will conclude at 12 p.m. Teachers will line up all around a specific route that students will then be able to drive and wave by wave goodbye to their teachers from the past four years. There will also be a senior drop-off and pick-up day on June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, where seniors will be able to drop off their textbooks and supplies, and they can pick up their caps and gowns from a specific drive-through route. 
Although graduation is still uncertain at this time, there are many options that Dr. K has put forth. Um, there are talks about having graduation on the football field or at the Sears Center, in, which, would be, which would include social distancing practices. Senior class will receive more information about whether or not the graduation will be in person or virtual as more information about COVID-19 comes out. And there is one more thing that has been tentatively suggested for the senior class, uh, Thanksgiving weekend reunion. Hopefully at this time, things will, have, uh, things will be safer and we will be allowed to each see each other at safe distance, distances. Dr. K hosted a meeting for all juniors to give them class updates. Um, Mrs. Belstra reassured the worried juniors about college and provided more information about the ACT and SAT. Dr. K also provided information about next year's parking and carpool information for incoming seniors. The class of 2021 has set um, a new school record for the number of students signing up for carpool. Um, in Orcasis, uh, they had a virtual show of all the dances um, that students had been working on this year. Special thanks to Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Cashman for the amazing video compilation made of the dances and for helping the members keep up some beloved in traditions, including the senior slideshow and super superlative awards for the dancers. In theater and stage players, they're doing a virtual banquet on May 29th to honor our seniors. Parents are invited and all theater students, no matter what grade are, you are, are invited also. The shows for next year's season will be announced at the banquet along with recognizing the hard work all students have done in the past 2019 to 2020 senior season, I mean season, along with the 2020 to 2021 stage player board will be announced too. The stage player board would love to thank Mr. Thomas and Mr. Holly for all their hard work and amazing things that they have done for our senior class. We thank them so much for everything they have done for us during these hard times. Their support means the world to us. In choir last week, uh, Dr. Brown personally dropped off goodie bags and plaques for seniors who have been in choir for four years. It was a very touching gesture for, um, for sen sentimental seniors and a great way to close off the season. In Stuco, um, exec board results came out last week and the team is working hard to finalize some plans for the upcoming school year. They have been planning out the next homecoming theme and spirit packs for the next school year. To close, the three of us would love to thank the board for the past year and everything that they have done for us. It's been such an honor to represent LHS students and to have the opportunity to better LHS. Our monthly lunch meetings have truly brightened all of our days and getting the chance to talk with the administration and learn more about the inner workings of our school's decision-making process has been an irreplaceable experience. We want to thank you for giving us the chance to grow as students and leaders through this experience. Pat Grudy, President. All right, so once again, I just want to say thanks to all you guys. Um, to the new group, uh, you now see the big shoes you have to fill. Um, and I certainly, I certainly hope that we can sit here again next year and say, wow, you've even done it better than they've done. Um, although I'm sitting here tonight, I'm not sure how you would do that. Um, but I'd also uh, like to say, you know, we talked a lot about this daring mission statement all the time. And when we rolled it out, we said, we sure hope that's something other than just something we hang on the wall and it looks good on the wall. And I was looking through it as you guys were talking. I don't think we could ever imagine a class that is more resilient than this class of 2020. Um, the example that you guys have set, it's just incredible. And, uh, you know, you've just shown some incredible strength, uh, incredible resilience, and incredible everything uh, just getting through it. Your attitude through this whole thing has just been inspiring, I know, to a lot of us. And then I also look and said, I was thinking creative because the, the videos and things that I've seen have just been fantastic, whether they've come from the staff, the administration, the students. Um, I know, once again, anybody that knows me, every time I go to graduation, when the choir starts singing, I start tearing. So I saw the Vernon Hills one the other day, and lo and behold, same thing happened. Um, because those videos are in the, in the choirs are just so great. But uh, again, you guys have been incredibly inspiring. I, I don't know if we'll ever see a class that inspires us in the way you guys have. And I just want to say thanks. And I really just, I hope you guys just keep it up. I know wherever you're going and you're all going to some really fantastic places, they're going to be lucky to have you. And so I hope you lead the way there just like you did here. So thanks for everything. My recommendation now, we go to the superintendent's report next. Um, 
And, and actually, one more thing, Mary, I'd like to thank you too for all your posts on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. It's been really great to see all those videos. I know, Brian, you sent, sent out a bunch of them too, but uh, the timeliness of the things on Facebook to see that they're posted has really been helpful. So thanks for doing that. And then one last thing, um, if we like this morning's session uh, with the students, we do have an encore presentation for Wednesday. Uh, where all of us are going to recognize all of the people that are retiring from the district. So as many of you know, we usually have an annual party and celebration, which is also a fantastic event. Um, but we weren't able to do that this year. So we're going to bring the party to them uh, and spend some time Wednesday morning to at least recognize our retiring, uh, our staff and, and faculty. So uh, I look forward to that. All right, so let's go to the superintendent's report. Um, and students, I'd encourage you to hang out for that. There's a couple updates in there you might want to hear. And then after that, you're free to go. And I don't know what you got to do now. You don't have finals to study for, but um, I'm sure you got plenty of things on the, on the docket. All right. I'm going to have to head out. Um, it's Ramadan and I'm fasting, so I'm going to go break my fast. But thank you. Okay, great. Sure. Yeah, me for too. Sure. Prentice Lee, superintendent. Okay, Dr. Lee. Okay, thank you, Dr. Grudy, and uh, one more shout out to um, our outgoing representatives and to our incoming representatives. Uh, yes, you have big shoes to fill, but in the spirit of what we always do at District 128, we build on the excellence that's before us, and, and you're going to do that, and we know you're going to do that, and you're going to do a great job, so welcome aboard to you. Okay, some additional uh, great news and maybe a little uh, more detail on a couple of uh, things the students hit on. In March, the LHS student newspaper, DOI, entered the Illinois Journalism Education Association Newspaper and Digital News Media Contest. For this contest, DOI was considered a hybrid publication since it is published both in print and digitally. In their specific category awards, students received eight first places, nine second places, two third places, and three honorable mentions. Students earning these awards are Pavan Chara, Sarah Bennett, uh, Andrew Benoit, Amanda Black, uh, Sarah Bogan, Ian Cox, Lily Hieronymus, uh, Jasmine Lafita, Callie Lichter, Ella Marsden, Charlotte Pulte, Christian Roberts, Clara Salemi, Lillian Williams, and Raina Wu. The IG, the IJEA, then assigns points to each first place, second place, etc. finish and gives its best publication rankings. DOI received first place in the best hybrid publication category and received the best overall publication ranking, which is the highest points total regardless of category. Congratulations to all DOI staff members and their advisor, Michael Gluskin, for receiving these well-deserved honors. VHHS post-secondary counselor, Becky Belito, was recently honored by the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling. Uh, Belito was named the 2020 recipient of the Molly K. Arnold President's Service Recognition Award. The award was inaugurated in 1999 to recognize members with more than five years of service who have provided strong and consistent leadership to IACAC. LHS students Molly Moscato, um, Celia McDermott Hinman, Charlotte Pulte, Elise Stauffer, and Madeline Wittenbrink received honors in the 2019-20 Illinois Association of Teachers of English Poetry and Prose Contest. The students and their submissions were recognized in IATA's nearly 50-year-old contest designed to recognize and celebrate the best student writers in the state. The VHHS FBLA Club and its advisors attended the I Illinois FBLA Virtual State Leadership Conference Saturday, May 9, and Tuesday, May 12th. Due to the current stay-at-home order, students from around the state competed virtually by submitting their projects and presentations electronically for advanced judging. VHHS had 90 potential competitors in 48 different events with 38 national qualifiers. VHHS was also recognized for having the fourth largest chapter in the state of Illinois for the um, 1920 school year. Uh, congratulations to all the national qualifiers and their advisors, Lynn Benson, Tony Isabelli, Kate Isabelli, and Kim Raciak. VHHS senior Just, Justina Chua is looking forward to the release of an app she helped develop as part of her advanced topics in computer science class at VHHS. She describes the app, named Reflect, 
as a website blocker for the productive. Chua and her team developed the idea for Reflect when realizing that existing website blockers didn't help them spend less time on social media and other distracting websites. The target audience for the app is anyone who is seeking to improve their relationship with technology and reflect more on their digital well-being. Congratulations to the VHHS students who were named History Fair State Finalists. These outstanding young historians have advanced through three levels of competition to reach this esteemed position of recognition. Way to make history, Cougars. Museum display boards were on two fronts by uh, Jay Goldovsky and Ben Kim. Immigration Act of 1965 by Aaron Kim and Anna Thomas. Tuskegee Airmen by Michael Lee. United Farm Workers by Christine Lee and Lauren Jung. And Roe vs. Wade by Nicole uh, Tartakovsky. Research paper, Mother Jones by Elise Kopstein. So congratulations to um, all of those students and staff members and, and great job. Uh, one more piece of good news I would like to share. Uh, as the board is aware, uh, last month we uh, brought uh, to the board uh, some information that we had uh, 300 first generation five to six year old Chromebooks um, that uh, were ready for disposal and uh, doing some behind the scenes, reach out to North Chicago to see what uh, District 80, 187, uh, to see how they were positioned for technology. Uh, lo and behold, they had a need for that technology. Um, and so the board voted to dispose of that equipment. We donated that equipment to North Chicago District 187. And uh, Superintendent John Price uh, has written the board and administrators a letter, and I'd like to read that into the record uh, tonight. Uh, to the Board and Administration of Community High School District 128, on behalf of the independent authority of School District 187 and the students and staff that we serve, I would like to thank you for your donation of 300 Chromebooks to our school district. We were able to take the donated laptops and provide them directly to families, free of charge, to increase families' access to online learning. Teachers and principals sent my team names of students who were attempting to access learning during the COVID-19 crisis, but could not because the family did not have a device for student use. With the laptops you provided, we have been able to increase the student's access. And we have been able to use parts from some of the laptops you provided to fix Chromebooks that we already had given out to students. Both services have been greatly appreciated by our families. The mother of a fifth grade student asked me after receiving a laptop when she needed to bring it back. When I responded, when your child leaves the district, an enormous smile erupted across the mother's face. Your gift has given us the opportunity to be generous and supportive of our families. The offer of support that came from Superintendent Lee was both incredibly generous, generous and timely. At a time when we were working to figure out means of providing greater access to our families, this donation from your school district enabled us to move quickly in an unanticipated way. Personally, I deeply appreciate the sense of partnership and mutual aid that this donation means. As neighbors, your support of our students is especially meaningful. Again, on behalf of the 3,500 students of North Chicago District 187 schools, thank you. Sincerely, John P. Price, Superintendent. So, very nice. So, uh, thanks to the board for uh, your support of our work with uh, District 187 and their students. Uh, obviously, greatly appreciate it. Um, okay, uh, that's it for the good news uh, tonight uh, under COVID-19. Just want to do a quick uh, update. Uh, first, we want to thank uh, our students, our parents, and of course, the staff um, in this journey that we've been on since, um, you know, the middle of March. Um, and uh, we want to especially thank the seniors. Pat, you've talked about uh, the seniors in reference to our, our mission statement. And I will say, as I said in my last communication to students and parents, you are our heroes forever. Uh, we will always remember you um, and the uh, dignity and grace with which you conducted yourself under very difficult circumstances. And it's obvious from sharing good news the last two months that our students are still engaged and they are still doing amazing things, uh, though they're doing it differently. Uh, but let's, all, like, let's also acknowledge that um, this... Um, past you know couple of months uh, has been historic it's unprecedented uh, it has numerous challenges and it's been frustrating 
uh, for um, all concerned because it's not normal. Uh, and there's no particular end inside of this. And so we want to make sure that, you know, we just acknowledge that and that we're all feeling that on some level, uh, including the administration uh, of the school district and the board feels that on behalf of all of us. So uh, we just want to make sure that, that folks understand that. We continue to be focused uh, on the health and safety and well-being of our students uh, but also the 450 staff members, uh, adult staff members that we have on the district as we look uh, to move forward. Uh, recently, I sent a communication to staff uh, and students and parents uh, where we've identified five uh, potential options for, um, you know, starting school next year. And just to review those very quickly, again, one normal in-person opening, back to school as normal with no adaptations. Two, Adapted in-person opening, back to normal, but with adaptations, such as temperature checks, masks, social distancing, et cetera. Three, a hybrid opening, a combination of in-person and remote learning with adaptations, such as temperature checks, masks, social distancing, et cetera. Four, varied in-person opening, alternating days, split shifts, et cetera, again, with adaptations such as temperature checks, masks, social distancing, et cetera. And then fifth is remote opening, but we're calling that an enhanced uh, remote learning uh, scenario. We just wanna uh, review again uh, that the remote learning that we engaged in this spring was uh, literally a stopgap uh, from where we were at on March 13th to the end of the year, uh, um, having to be planned in very short order. Um, it is very different than what remote learning would need to look like if we had to start the year or pivot sometime during the year to remote learning. Let me give you an example. First, there are no baseline grades when we start school in the fall to reference. So um, that pivot to, um, you know, uh, work that is going to count uh, for credit, uh, the weight that goes with that, uh, the potential work that teachers can uh, ask students to do, uh, can hold students accountable for, uh, can evaluate and work with students to support them to do that, uh, will certainly look different if we go to remote um, learning. Uh, we don't believe, and I don't think anybody else believes in the state, that we can pivot to what we've done now uh, as a placeholder uh, and, and make that work going forward, um, you know, down the line. So as we consider those five options, um, I also talk in my recent communication about that decision-making process. And it's very important to understand that the governor, the Illinois State Board of Education, and the Illinois Department of Health are in the driver's seat regarding decisions to open the school, what the options might look like to open school, and the parameters and conditions under which uh, we would open school. Um, that decision will be made at a state level and all, although it may be uh, different in different regions based on where they're at as we uh, approach school, um, the choices that we have ultimately and uh, the parameters and conditions under which we will have to um, operate um, if we open um, under one of those uh, options and as we open under one of those options um, is certainly going to be driven uh, by the state uh, moving forward. So um, as we look at those options, what we are doing administratively is we're planning for all five of those options. And we will plan up to the point that we need uh, more direction uh, from the state. Uh, I am told it's possible in the next five to 15 days uh, that the state will give us some options that are possibilities from their viewpoint. Um, so I would guess that that is one or more of the options that we've talked about or we've identified uh, moving forward, and I don't believe they'll be at a place to make a decision, um, let's say in early June, uh, where we're going to be in mid-August or in early September uh, in starting school, but that's going to give us a little bit more direction in terms of the options that are out there. So we are assuming right now that these are our, our five options. We're going to pursue all five options up to the point that we need additional uh, parameters and conditions from um, the state uh, to move forward with um, that planning. So the other thing is looking at camps and summer school 
Uh, you know, they've been suspended uh, or canceled, if you like uh, that word better. Um, this year, uh, we're getting uh, many questions about athletics and what that looks like since uh, students have summer camps and they uh, fall athletes come back, um, you know, early in the summer to get ready for the opening of season. And IHSA has not made a final decision yet. The Illinois High School Association, of course, they're waiting guidance for guidance from the state as well. But we have made the decision, uh, has been reported earlier, that uh, we will not have summer camps based on uh, where uh, kind of the world is right now, where we're at with COVID-19, uh, nor will we have uh, normal summer school um, this summer as well. So the important takeaways here is are that, um, you know, we've identified the options. We're going to continue to plan for those options. We recognize the frustration, the challenges that, you know, we all have and particularly students and parents in this particular situation. But as we work with the state, um, you know, we'll, we'll be at the center of their decision-making is gonna be health, safety, and well-being of students and staff members. And we also have to remember, while we have 3,400 students, we have 450 older adults uh, in the building that work with those students. And where students may not uh, uh, make, uh, carry the virus but uh, not manifest symptoms, uh, that is uh, not necessarily true with um, older adults, uh, staff members. So um, there's nothing, and I can speak for all of us, and I know I can speak for the board on this. There's nothing that all of us would not like more than to be able to say we're opening, it's done, it's over, we're opening and we're going to move forward. That would make us the happiest people on the face of the planet. Um, but we just don't have enough information and guidance at this point. We're hoping that sometime into June, um, you know, maybe early July, that we're going to get some uh, additional direction. Uh, the students talked a little bit about uh, our plans for uh, in-person uh, graduation are, are in the week of uh, July 20th um, at uh, Vernon Hills in Libertyville. Uh, we'll need to make decisions on those probably, you know, June 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th uh, to whether we're moving forward and then John and Tom uh, you know, we'll be working on alternate plans to recognize our students uh, moving forward because we certainly want to. We certainly want to do that, but we hope that we're going to be able to do that uh, with social distancing uh, in some way in in person. And if not in person, then a you know great alternative moving forward. So um, that's where it sits uh, right now. We will continue to keep uh, students, parents, and staff up to speed. Of course, I will continue to communicate uh, regularly with the board. Uh, as we get uh, additional information moving forward. But we understand and we are all experiencing your frustration and the challenges with you. Uh, and we will do the very best job we can uh, with the parameters and conditions and the options that we have um, available. So I'll stop for a minute to see if there are any questions from uh, board members or if the administrators want to add um, anything else to that. We're good. Okay. Um, so we'll, uh, at that point, we'll move on. So capital projects update, uh, Dan and Mark, or Dan or Mark. Mark, do you want a status and project? Okay. Um, Mark Copeman, B and G. That construction site will start at uh, Vernon Hills. Uh, over in the classroom edition, um, things have been moving along. Um, the uh, I walked the building the other day. Uh, it's nice to see the connections uh, uh, where the hallway is going to be to the new addition. Uh, they've got a lot of things done inside the original building. Um, we're waiting on um, finalizing the, the glass um, for the west wall of the classroom addition. Uh, that should be going up here soon. Uh, things are really looking moving forward over there. And we'll be moving on with masonry on the outside. Um, vapor barrier has been an issue with the rain. Uh, the block has to be dry for us to get that on. Um, but uh, we're still on track. We'll be on time. Uh, moving to area B with the cafeteria expansion. Uh, now that the wall is down uh, from the old surgery, uh it looks tremendous. Uh, the space is opened up. Um, they're continuing with the demo, uh, moving forward, all the equipment. We got all the equipment out of, out of the area, um, 
for all the work to be done. So they've been taking out duck work and, and that. So um, it's going to turn out real nice. So we're, we're on track there, uh, catching up on some um, flashing that has to be done through wall flashing, they call it. Uh, and then the new roof can go on here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, over to the gym edition and, and uh, dance studio. Uh, progress is moving forward there. 70% of the roof is completed. Um, the mason is working back so we can get um, to the last few trusses that have to go over the main gym, but 70% of that roof is on. Um, they've been, uh, the equipment uh, is taken out of the dance studio, so they're working on decking for the flooring up in that area. And we're uh, getting grading and gravel uh, set to pour the floor in the main gym. Um, so moving on to Libertyville High School, uh, demo of the wall separating the old wrestling room and the old, the old, um, um, would have been um, the weight room. Uh, the wall is down. Uh, the flooring's up. Uh, the space looks looks good. The elect electricians have started demo in there. Um, so that, that project is moving forward. Um, we are scheduled for new flooring uh, in June 22nd. So um, we'll be able to complete all the things that need to be done prior to the flooring going in, staying on schedule with that. And uh, with the, the, we finally got the stair treads uh, came in um, on Friday. So they will be for the, uh, for the uh, old pool remodel uh, with the multi-purpose gym in the dance studio. Uh, stair treads, uh, they will start installing them tomorrow. And then it's just punch list, finishing up punch list items in that area. That completes uh, what's going on on the construction site. Questions? Okay. Okay, uh, next on the superintendent's report is Lake County Indemnification Agreement. Dan, uh, do you want to touch base on that? Or Bryant? Yeah, uh, um, Daniel Stanley Business. This is an annual agreement with Lake County, um, where as typically when a developer is looking to develop a property, they want to build houses or something like that, uh, typically, if you're doing that in, in the confines of a city or a municipality, uh, you have, there's ordinances and rules they have to follow, and so typically there's impact fees they have, to, uh, they have to give to the schools or land they have to give to the schools, and that's set out by the ordinance. You know, so Vernon Hills would have their own, Libertyville would have their own set. Uh, but if you're in county property and not in anything in, incorpor in incorporated property, uh, it goes straight to the county. And so this is an agreement... Uh, essentially the county acknowledging that we can set up our own deal if we want to with uh, these developers and that they will they will honor that and they will essentially enforce that making sure that you know that they're the developers providing proof that they've they've uh, they've paid uh, per the agreement that we've done with them and it's also us saying agreeing that they're going to enforce it if they get sued, you know, if they, 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 if they get sued, that we're going to help that out um, so that they're not protected, so that they're not a party to this agreement. They're just helping to enforce it at the county level. It's an annual requirement. Basically the same agreement we have had in the past, correct, Dan? Yes. yes. All right, is there a motion to approve the Lake County Indemnification Agreement? I motion to approve the Lake County Indemnification Agreement. A second. Be second by Jim. Any discussion? If not, roll call, please. Jackson. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> Carmichael. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Rooney. Aye. All right. Motion carries. FOIA request. Okay, Pat, uh, last thing in the superintendent's report tonight is a FOIA request. Uh, we received a FOIA request on 5-7-2020. The response deadline was 5-14-2020. The requester was Claire Demos, Law Office of Barbara M. Demos, PC, 4746 North Milwaukee Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. 
uh, 60630, claire at demislaw.com. Information requested, all building and other permits, plans, drawings, survey, citations, and code violations for 361 North Fiori Parkway, Vernon Hills, Illinois, 60061, Penn, 1506, uh, 406001. Follow-up was done by Dan Stanley. Uh, no responsive records, and we sent that response on 514-2020. What, what's that address? Was that? I don't know. It's not any property that we own. I didn't recognize I'm guessing they maybe have made a mistake, but whatever. It, we don't have any responsive records to that request. I didn't recognize it. Okay, for our new school board ref, just you know, FOIA is Freedom of Information Act, and so anybody from the public can re request a copy of Rudy virtually any record that we have other than personal records, and we're legally obligated to turn them over. So when we talk about FOIA, that's what this is. Okay. All right. Any okay. Pat, that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So um, to all of our school board reps, again, I want to say thank you for your previous service or thank you for signing up for next year. You are certainly welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, um, but if you would like to uh, go on and do other things, you're also welcome to leave if that's what you would choose to do. Okay? All right, next. Uh, the consent you. Yeah. See you guys. Thank you. Pat Grudy, president. The consent vote agenda is next. We reviewed this a week ago in committees. Um, if I could ask for a motion to approve the consent vote agenda. Move to approve the consent vote agenda. Second. Second. All right. Moved by Don, seconded by Karen, I believe. Uh, any, any discussion? All right. Roll. Carmichael. All right. Grudy. Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstead? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Motion carries. Program and Personnel Committee, Chairperson Batson. Jim Batson, VP. Thank you, Dr. Grudy. Um, we have a few uh, board policies here for the second reading and adoption. Uh, six of them to be exact. Um, these were reviewed in previous committee meetings and in uh, last month's board meeting. Um, I don't know that we have to go through all of them uh, collectively. We can just have a motion and a second to adopt and or remove. We have two policies that are being removed. Can we have a motion, please? I move to adopt and remove policies as laid out in the uh in today's agenda second okay any questions or comments i don't believe there's been any adjustments or anything to these so i think they're they're pretty well good to go anybody nope okay can we have a roll call please rudy aye hessel aye huber aye lundstead aye Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Okay, that passes. We have um, next up the textbook adoption requests for 2021 for next school year. Pat Grudy, president. And again, Jim, I think we discussed this in detail last week, unless anybody feels otherwise, I think we can. Right, right. Yeah, I was just trying to catch up with the, uh, the documentation here, pay, aging through all the uh, policies. Um, any questions on that or anything? We have a motion and a second, please. Yeah, I move to approve the textbook adoption request as presented for 2020-2021. Second. second. Okay, who, who won that competition? I think Casey. I think Casey won that one. All right, any other questions or anything on this? All right, can we have a roll call, please? Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstead? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Grudy? Aye. Jim Batson, VP. Okay, that motion passes. Uh, we, next up is a memorandum of agreement. Um, and just briefly, this is 
shifting the pay periods in the year, uh, and Dan, you could probably correct me if I'm wrong, it's shifting uh, the pay periods in the year up um, one period so that it is closer aligned with the actual time of work um, in the past because of the, over the years, the adjustment in the school year, it's, uh, it's gotten to the point where a new teacher waits about a month before they first get paid. So this is just to reflect the, uh, the shifting of the school years over a period of time. So uh, can we have a, a motion on this one, please? I move to approve the memorandum of agreement for school year 2021 and 2122. Second. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments on this? Okay. Can we have a roll call, please? Huber. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, we have a um, item D here, educational tours. Uh, Dr. Lee, you want to uh, give us an overview of the recommendation? Uh, yeah, and then, then I'll give an administrative recommendation. Uh, and then we can have any discussion, further discussion that we need to have on this. Uh, the board and the administration spent uh, just under an hour and a half at uh, committee meetings on uh, this important topic. And I want to commend the board again because it was one of our a really classic, uh, and I mean that in a great way, uh, discussions about, uh, you know, a somewhat complex issue. And the issue is that uh, we had a number of spring trips that were scheduled for this year. And uh, because of what was going on with COVID-19, uh, those uh, either we canceled the trips or uh, in some cases then the vendor uh, canceled the trip as it became more obvious a little bit later in uh, March. Uh, that uh, this was much worse than uh, anyone thought. So we had a very extensive conversation about one segment of the trips, and that were our two trips uh, that were nonprofit. One of those trips was to uh, Guatemala, and one of those trips was uh, to Thailand. And uh, the, uh, uh, the way the settlements uh, came out with uh, those two trips is that uh, the parents were um, uh, offered uh, vouchers uh, with no other uh, compensation uh, to use at a future time. One of the trips had three seniors, and as part of an agreement with one of the companies, uh, those three departing seniors on a kind of standalone agreement uh, will get all of their money back because they're seniors and they can't repeat uh, that travel in the future. Uh, what the administration has recommended, and we spent most of our time talking about last time, is uh, that um, the board uh, potentially... Uh, repurchase uh, those vouchers from uh, parents who would uh, maybe not have their kids take the trips uh, at some point uh, in the future or uh, if the company had some additional uh, trouble. If the parents take the voucher from the company, they get 100% value. So one-to-one -one, you know, voucher that they could use uh, on a future trip uh, within the next calendar year-ish um, moving forward. If um, the board uh, repurchase those from some or all of the parents. Uh, the parents would get 75% of that value. The board would take ownership uh, of those vouchers and then could reassign those vouchers uh, to uh, any of our students, including uh, students who often do not have a chance uh, to take uh, more expensive um, you know, trips out of the country. Um, the backside of that as part of the discussion uh, that we had uh, again, very extensive discussion was um, using taxpayer dollars um, to uh, to do that. And so um, where we ended up, at least at that part of the discussion, understanding that we have not voted on this, uh, and this may require some additional discussion, is that um, it was suggested that we do 75% of the face value. And so the parents have, would have two options. And that would be you could take the 100% voucher, the parents, uh, get that full value, um, or uh, the district um, could purchase that for 75% of the face value, uh, and then the parents could make the decision. So uh, we needed to kind of uh, calculate out uh, the potential liability of the district if everyone selected the 75%. So we've done that. Um, 
and the value of the vouchers was uh, $77,230 and it's 75%. If my math is um, correct, we are at uh, 57,963 uh, would be the recommendation. So with that said, what I will do at this point is I'll read the recommendation in. Uh, Jim can ask for uh, someone to make a motion, uh, assuming that somebody does make a motion. Uh, then we'll have a second in discussion before there's any vote uh, on this again. I want to tell the board how much we appreciate um, the discussions that we have on things that are very complex and often very challenging. Uh, this was certainly one of those. Uh, we appreciate the depth of that conversation uh, moving forward. And, and, you know, we'll see where that takes us tonight. Wherever that takes us, you know, it, it will be fine. Okay. So... All right. Can I can I ask a question? I don't mean to interrupt you. Yes. Refresh course, my Casey. why Casey we, Rooney School. I know board. there was some conversation. Remember, this was an hour and a half conversation. Um, so we certainly did discuss this for um, quite a while because uh, it is an important subject. Refresh my memory. There was some conversation about potentially pushing this decision off, maybe to next set of meetings. What Pat Grudy, president? Casey, I, I'll, I'll address that. I remember that part of the conversation. So, I think on one hand, what we said was there isn't really any new information that we're going to get, um, okay. you know, in terms of what our vendors are going to do for us. For example, I, I think the one thing that we we might get if we delay this is we might get a lot of feedback. All right. So, for example, if we say we're not going to pay anything, for example, we might get a lot of feedback from the parents that are impacted. And then that might cause us to go back and then rethink this thing and, and then come back and say, okay, we changed our mind and this is what we're going to do. And, and I, at least what I recall was I didn't think there was going to be any new data from the vendors. And two, I don't think we want to be in the position where we're going to respond to feedback. I think at the end of the day where we ended up was the proposal here does as good a job as we can to sort of level the playing field across all these trips with all these parents so that everybody is getting something back. If they're not getting uh, a full refund, we're trying to kind of make it somewhat equitable. And, and because in some cases we knew some of the parents were not going to get a hundred percent refunds. I think we felt that this 75% thing was, you know, kind of a compromise that, you know, Pat Grudy, president, had some risk risk sharing in it for both sides, for us and for the and for the parents. So I, that's what I recall. I don't know if anybody else has another. Uh, Pat, I'll add to that. The, the the other part of that was these parents are, need to make this decision on on purchasing this, uh, or or obtaining this voucher or moving on with further, since this is an agreement between the parent and the company and the organization, whether they take further action, and not knowing what we might do to help them out Jim Batson, VP. Uh, might cause them to go down one pathway, whereas with this information in their pocket, they have all the options on the table currently. So that gives them the information to make their decision on how they're going to handle this, whether they're going to keep it, whether they're, they're going to accept some uh, offer from us, uh, potential offer from us, or whether they're going to continue to, to uh, uh, go down the path of trying to negotiate something with the, the organization. So I think by delaying that do, might, um, you know, frustrate somebody in, in making that decision and delaying their decision or their options to, to move forward. So I think that was part of the, the, uh, the judgment there too. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Anybody else? Is that, is that, is that sufficient case here? You... Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Prentice, yeah, are you going to add anything else in there? Yeah, we're, we're going to have time for discussion here in a minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Kevin's sure. yeah no, again, I, I kind of... Kevin Huber, school board. One of the things that I think we need to also consider, though, at this point in time is a lot of information came, an hour and a half worth of information came, and you only gave us a week to process it. And so I, I, I am struggling with tonight trying to figure that out. So I appreciate Casey raising the issue of sure. can it be decided in June just because, again, I'm leaning towards okay, for sure. But then again, I, I defer back to if it was my own dollar, would I be investing a dollar into a 
a business that's probably not going to be in business? And the answer is no, I wouldn't. So sometimes you have to make a hard decision. It's not, but it's the right decision. So it's just, it's just kind of a, a struggle because it is when this idea about reimbursing people came up, it's been a longer process than just like we, we really it culminated last week, but it's been a, a longer process. And we also didn't know how bad the COVID-19 impact would be to knock these businesses really out of business. So that, while we're trying to do the right thing by people, are we doing the right thing? And so I struggle with making the decision tonight, but if, if we ask for a vote, I will make a vote. I will decide yes or no. But I do think that there is some merit in going, Ugh, can we sit on it for a little bit more time? And if we can't, and I, Jim, thanks for speaking up, because I, I forgot about that. Those people, you know, if they are bound by something, where they have to make a decision, and we certainly have to make a decision tonight. We can't, we can't kick the can down the road any further. But if that's not, I, I don't know what that exact, you know, that line in the sand for them is. So, Prentice, if you maybe can help me refresh my memory on that one. I know we probably talked about it a week ago. Sure. Uh, but but, the, so, is the question is the decision that we're asking about whether or not they have to make a decision, yes or no, on a voucher, or what? What is that decision that? I'm not. I'm not aware that the parents are under any kind of timeline. Rita Fisher, curriculum. Rita, do you want to jump in here? Sure. At this at this point, we know that the two two nonprofit companies have offered uh, families uh, vouchers rather than refund. All the other canceled trips um, were offered some form of refund, not a hundred percent refund, but some form of refund with cancellation fees for these two trips. Um, there is no further negotiation forthcoming between these two companies, um, and families will not be offered an opportunity for any kind of refund. The only thing they're being offered by these two companies is a voucher for future travel. And we know that some of our families um, have requested, are interested in refunds rather than vouchers. So we're kind of at the point where there is really not any more information that's going to be forthcoming from these companies. Um, we know that, that families are going to be offered a voucher or... Um, Casey Rooney School Board. Or yeah. nothing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if we do nothing, yeah. Go ahead, Casey. The reason I asked is I, I, I am really struggling with this decision. I, 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 there are as Prentice said, meritorious arguments on each side. I feel for these families in the position that they're in through no fault of their own uh, due to a, you know, hundred year pandemic who could have foreseen that. Um, but I, I'm just really struggling with using taxpayer dollars to purchase trips that we then own for companies that I'm not a big better, but <laughs> I'll take the bet that they're not going to be around. Okay. Uh, so, and again, I think, I think that's consistent. That's why I am. Yeah, and I think that's consistent with what we talked about the other night. I think there's every reason in the world to believe that these vouchers I – I wouldn't want to leave anybody with the impression that we're buying these vouchers because we think financially that's going to be a good deal for us. Pat Grudy, president. Because my guy, I, I'm with you. I'm with you, and probably the majority of us. It says very good chance either a those companies won't exist, or b those vouchers will either expire or otherwise be unusable within the time frame where they have any value at all. Though we did talk about maybe the companies would renegotiate that if, in fact, you know, this time next year we can't do a trip because we still have COVID restrictions. So I, I mean, clearly this is not a financial decision that you would. It, it's not like one I would make if I was going to invest my own money. I mean, there's no way. Okay. Right. I think the rationale here became, okay, we know for at least a couple of the trips here, the way the vendors approached it, the families didn't get all, but they got most of their money back. Okay. We have a situation here where we have families that were de deciding to go on other trips. Again, not district trips, but I think we sort of talked about whether it's a district trip or not a district trip, kind of our name and reputation are hanging on it. Um, and I think the rationale as much as anything was to make sure that this set of parents was not in a position that was significantly adverse relative to those other parents that did get at least a partial refund. And also remember, we pulled the plug on the trip. The district pulled the plug on the trip. 
Yeah, we did initially, although, again, I think there's a case to be made that by the time the trip happened, the plug was yeah. pulled for us. Whether we oh, absolutely, yeah, but it, initially. And it would, it would have been a very different situation in yeah, my mind had that not been the case. It certainly changes the dynamics with respect to what we might be obligated to do relative to where we started this conversation, which was the million-dollar issue where we were going to not get any refunds and we're going to have to reimburse all money. So, well, Pat, that, that actually doesn't change our board policy. No, no, no. Which reads, yeah, go ahead. privately arranged Lisa trips, Hassel School board. including those led by district staff members, shall not be represented or construed to be sponsored by the district or school. The district does not provide liability protection for privately arranged trips and is not responsible for any damages arising from them. What we are responsible for is the health and safety of our students and the health, health and safety of our staff who are chaperoning these trips and who run the risk of either being quarantined in a foreign country, quarantined when they return, contracting a, a virus that was we knew at the time was dangerous. We didn't know how dangerous, but we knew it was dangerous and potentially spreading that to the rest of the population of the school. So the decision that we made to proactively cancel some of the trips before the tour companies canceled them before those countries would have not allowed foreigners in was one that our policies would hold up because of the health and safety of our students and staff. It does not confer liability, uh, financial or otherwise as a district to reimburse people for trips. Yeah. yeah, and that's why this is not a reimbursement. This is a purchase of a voucher. It, it's, it's it's a, a fine it's line, semantic. but it's it's semantic. But it's it's still it's it's it it's not in in any way any. Jim Batson, VP. All right, well, again, let's, let's be clear. We're we're we're, we're going to read. We're going to read have this whole conversation, and we're going to wind up being an hour and a half again tonight, which we really don't need to do or maybe we do need to do but i don't think now is the time to do that I'll, so i'll do my i'll do my best to make sure everybody's points of view are heard and we don't spend an hour and a half on it okay so but let's let's be clear lisa you're absolutely correct by the board policy we are under no obligation whatsoever to take action here and reimburse the parents i believe that's what the policy says okay everybody agree mm -hmm. yes. yes so we don't have to do this um with respect to the timing, though, I, I think we have two choices. I think, one, there's a proposal on the table. We can, we can vote that yay or nay, however that goes, and take action on that tonight. Or, two, we can wait and continue to process this because, again, I don't think there's any new info. There's not any new information coming in from the vendors. What will happen after this meeting, because after this meeting, I suspect Reed is going to go to the parents and say either the board took action and here's what they decided to do, or the board didn't take action because, frankly, they're not planning on doing anything, okay? And we let the chips fall, at which point I would expect we would get feedback one way or another. Okay. Some may say, thank you very much for considering it. Others may say, I'm going to pound my fist until you give me a refund. Right. I don't okay? So, if so I I'm yeah, – Go ahead. I, I'll just – so that we don't go on for an hour and a half. I have only a couple more comments and then I will be ready to vote if that's what everybody wants to do. Um, my Lisa Hassel School Board. strong feeling that we should not buy vouchers is because the district has more important things to do with $57,000 of taxpayers' money that would, if we purchase vouchers, go to a very small segment of our community when it is our job as stewards of the taxpayer dollars to consider the whole community. Uh, finally, I, I really want to emphasize that my desire to see us move on and not purchase vouchers for trips that we're not responsible for is in no way intended to denigrate the countless hours that Dr. Fisher has spent fighting for every dollar that has been refunded to most of the families in its entirety. It is because of that 
that I know that the district has already gone above and beyond with Dr. Fisher's countless hours that she did not, was under no obligation to spend, but spent anyway, in addition to outside counsel that the district provided that also advocated on these families' behalf. We have already gone above and beyond. We certainly have already discussed this at length. Now, my comments are out there. I won't belabor anybody any further, but um, I'm ready to vote no if it comes to a vote tonight. Okay. Jim Batson, VP. Um, I, I think what we, we should be doing is following the process, and that is ask yeah. for a motion in a second, and then have our conversation, which we've already preempted uh, with this lengthy conversation. But, um, you know, the process is, is to, to ask for a motion in a second. So, um, I think in, in lieu of anything else, and uh, I would ask for if there's anyone that's willing to, to make the motion. Yeah, the only issue, though, that I do want us to kind of wrestle to the ground here is there's at least one board member, and there may be others that think we're rushing the decision. So by kind of by definition, at least the way I'm thinking, if we make a motion, we vote it up or down, but we rush that decision, then I don't know that that's a good mm -hmm. call either way. So I'd mm -hmm. like, to, I'd like to us to at least get comfortable you know, we, that we, that we, was, Pat, that was the decision at the end of the, the, the hour and a half conversation the other day is that we were going to bring the recommendation to this board. We were going to vote it up or down and, and move on from there. Yeah. This discussion has been happening without yet hearing what the recommendation is from our Right, side. yeah, we don't have the recommendation no, no. and we don't no, have we the motion to be able to, con yes, to, we to discuss. There's no, mo no motion. $75,000, well, that, right. Dr. Get, Lee did... did, did Prentice, would you agree that you've given us your recommendation? Well, I mean, I've given, I haven't given you the official recommendation, okay. but I, I, let me suggest something, Pat, to your point. Um, well, and by the way... Guys, sorry, you guys didn't hear it. We, we read it before the meeting. Go ahead, Prentice. Yeah. Pat, um, okay, so let me make a suggestion here, but before I do that, let me say this. Prentice Lee, superintendent. And, and you, you know... You got to do what you've got to do here. We and understand we respect that, but we also respect and understand all the dynamics here. Um, we brought this forward initially uh, because we believed it deserved that level of discussion uh, and it deserved that attention for the benefit of the families, you know, that invested in these trips. Understanding that there was no given uh, in terms of that, we also mentioned at the committee meeting that if we did vote on the recommendation and the vote was up or down, uh, either way, that uh, that's okay. I mean, that's, that's all right. That's certainly fine. And that's certainly way, the way board, boards function. Um, so I would just suggest to Pat's earlier report, let me read the recommendation. We can see if somebody wants to make a motion. Okay, if there is no motion, then we don't have anything. If somebody makes a motion, we can see if there's a second, okay? And even if you get to the point, if you want to have some more discussion at that point, then we can. But even at that point, um, you know, you could vote yes, you could vote no, uh, or we could come to agreement to table the motion. Yeah, that's so right. that, would, that would be your option. So I would suggest just let me read the, the, the recommendation and then we'll see if there's a motion, if there's a second, if there's more discussion, and then where you want to go with, with that. So um, I think that, you know, just gives us a path forward. Uh, but there's, there's certainly, you know, great arguments all around this, and that's why we're all struggling with this, right? I mean, that makes perfect sense. Um, so if that's okay, Jim go for it and pat you know that's what i'll do and then we can see where that takes yep. us okay yep. and wherever I, that is I, I forgot everybody hadn't heard the proposal so yeah if, if that is where you know wherever we're at is wherever we're at and that's okay right so the here's the here's our recommendation the administration recommends the approval of the potential district repurpose repurchase of designated cancel spring break education tour vouchers for 75 percent of face value and not to exceed $57,963, which is calculated by the full value of, uh, full face value of all those vouchers, $77,230 times 75 divided by 100 gives us a 57,963. And that would be from canceled rustic pathways, Thailand, and squads abroad, you know, Guatemala trips. 
So if somebody picks up the motion, since we know what the motion is, you can simply say, you know, um, um, I move as stated. Um, you don't have to repeat all of that. And then we can see where that takes us. If there is a motion, if there's not a motion, then the issue is done. Okay. At least for now. So that would be our recommendation, Jim, uh, to Thank the you. board. Thank you. Is there anyone that wants to make the motion? Hearing none. All right, so uh, we can't the, table a motion if there's not a motion to table. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make that motion as presented. Okay. Anybody second? I'll second. Okay. Okay. Uh, further discussion, comments, interest? Yeah, yeah. I, it, it's honestly the motion. You know. or, yeah, just let me. The, the reason I made the motion is twofold. One, I'm most likely going to follow up with the motion to table because if we have time tonight, I'd like to discuss it further in more detail or uh, at the next meeting. But two, I also, is Rick on the, is there, are any attorneys on the call apprentice right now or anybody? No. 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 Okay. Because one of the, my, one, my one other concern was if we do this, are we setting a precedent that we are in essence? So next year when some, something happens and we know this is, so, but something else horrible could happen. We, we, we don't know. Of course. And then we've now set this precedent that there's this expectation that we are indeed really a backstop. And again, as much as we say we're not, the board is now going out potentially, this is just a thought, potentially going out and kind of taking an action. I just want to make sure legally, like Rick would say, Kevin, by doing this, by doing this motion, because again, we could, have, we could have basically said, we're setting up a scholarship program and buying vouchers for the scholarship program. Okay, we could have said that, and that, that's, that's different, but we didn't. Uh, so I just wanna make sure we're not setting a bad precedent, but Kevin, I wanted to get the motion on the table, Prentice, and I, I think, cause I, sure. I think it's worthy of that. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Kevin, thank, thanks. One comment, uh, as you know, Lynn Himes worked with us on the Rust Worth with Rita uh, <laughs> on the Rustic Pathways, and I talked to Lynn several times. Uh, we could actually, you know, uh, part of the reason that we put rustic pathways and squads abroad in it is because it's only for those trips. So uh, in the future, as we get into what the new reality is going to look like, I think Casey and I had a conversation about this at some point, what the new reality is going to look like as we spoke last week in committee, uh, it will be not only us, but we all schools, we make it very clear to parents that, um, you know, you better buy insurance Okay, and beyond that, you're, you're on your own. You're on the financial hook here. The school district is not going to be on the financial hook for this trip. So I think, Kevin, we're, I'm, I'm confident in telling you that we're safe in that regards. This is not unlike negotiations, contract negotiations. When we do something and we say it's not precedent setting, but that's part of the reason that we named specifically these two companies and these two trips in that motion because it, only op it would only obligate us, if you voted yes, it would only obligate us to these two trips and not future trips. Pat Grudy, President. Okay, thank you. I, I, envision, I envision going forward, we're going to need to do something like have something that each parent signs off that says they understand that. The problem is most of yes. our parents don't understand board policies that say, hey, we don't have to pay anything here. But I think we've got to pull that out front and center and say, you're signing up for this trip. We hope you go. But if you don't go for any reason, including, you know, a pandemic or some other thing, it's not us. But we, we've got to get out of that. And, and you know, Kevin, I, I would certainly hope we would work with the attorneys to get something that makes it crystal clear. We're telling you up front that if you sign up for this, you're on the hook for it. I mean, I think here that the gap is we didn't give people the board policy that says if the trip gets canceled, you're not going to get your money back. I've but the, the contract that they signed was directly with the tour company, no, I agree. Lisa, not no, with the district. Look, your point's valid. I, I don't disagree with it. I, I really don't. So I'm, I'm, I'm respecting what you're saying. I mean, th there's part of me, though, that looks at this, too, and says, um, I mean, there are a lot of things that we do that only benefit a few people. Okay? Mark, how much is the tennis court rebuild in Libertyville? Half a million dollars, correct? Mark Copeman, B&G. Uh, 
just over 400,000. Okay, how yeah. many people play tennis every year? Right. Matt Grudy, president. You can do the math. I've done the math real quick. I say for a lot of our athletic programs, we don't have a whole lot of people in some of these sports, and we spend a lot of money on it. So, you know, it's a little hard sometimes to get to a numbers game as well, but there's only a few people because we do do that for small groups of people in other different ways. So Don't our gym classes? I'm just, I'm just trying to say that happens. Yes, they do. Right. So, yeah. again, I, yeah. mean, I don't I got a list of, I got a list of things. To, anybody you know, that's to are we taking turns or how are we doing this? No, no, go ahead. Karen Lundstedt, secretary. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, um, Karen. So, as I've thought this through since last week's meeting and – you know, kind of got a sense that this would be the recommendation. Um, I will not be able to support it. And uh, for these reasons, um, first of all, the trip is, is my best understanding is the trip would not have gone when the actual time came. Yeah. We were going to cancel it ahead of time, but they, at the time that the trip would have gone, it would not have come, correct? Yeah. No, um, no, that's true. Then, uh, well, first of all, what I meant to start with, and I'm sorry, I should have started with this, is so much, thanks so much to, to Rita, to Dr. Fisher, for all the work she did. I believe that what the offer that came from these two companies is significantly more generous than what, where they began the negotiations. So there's certainly um, a great deal more offered to the families who signed these contracts with these companies to take these trips and did or did not decide to use insurance um, of course, not knowing that there was going to be this, you know, unprecedented pandemic. But nonetheless, thank you so much for what you've done on behalf of all these families and the great offer of a 100% voucher that is so much higher than what it began with, is my understanding. So thank you for doing that. And I hope the families really appreciate all the work that's gone on for that. Um, Karen Lundstedt, secretary. It was a contract signed by the families with the company. Um, I believe that in that they would have had the option to have insurance. I don't know if that insurance would have paid off here or not. So I don't, you know, I'm just saying these are the thoughts that I've had. Um, I know that as other members of the board have alluded to, we have not yet discussed how we're going to revamp the way we move forward with these trips, but we know that we need to change. So that is a point to me against purchasing a voucher that not only do we not know if the company is going to be in, in business, but we don't even know if we would be approving a school trip um, even within that year. We don't know if we're ready to do that or not. We, we know that we've got a lot to think about. Um, uh, to Lisa's point, as she read the board policy, to me, not only does, to me, this violates board policy. It's not just that we're not, you know, we're not, to me, we're not following board policy. I do think it sets a precedent for the future, even though maybe we're being particular with these two companies and naming their names. It still is setting a general precedent that we're going to do a wonderfully kind thing to try to help out these families who are finding themselves in this position, as are, I would say, a, gener a large portion of um, our school kids, uh, the students and their families also suffered some loss of trip planning uh, over spring break and other trips. So they're, they're not alone. Uh, I certainly am, am working on negotiating a trip that I've, uh, I, made the, I made the decision to buy the room that had a no cancellation policy. And even though the government won't allow me in the country, I'm still working on trying to get my funds back. So it's, it's not a unique situation. Um, but most of all, I, I can't, in good conscience, approve $58,000 potential uh, spending of taxpayers' money for this. I just, I just can't. I mean, there's a part of me that wants to. I can't. I just feel like it's not something I can jump on the bandwagon. So there's my thoughts. Okay, good input, Karen. I'll jump in when you. Uh, when I'm, I'm done. Don Carmichael School Board. Okay. Uh, I also agree that it's inconsistent with policy. However, I don't think that the policy uh, expressly forbids us from doing this. Um, but I, I think that it's definitely inconsistent with policy. Um, I have been a parent who has purchased these trips and I have been a leader of these trips. And in no case did I think it was the school's responsibility uh, if anything happened. In fact, when we signed our contract for the kids to go to Cuba, we knew that at any moment they could shut Cuba down. Uh, and we would be out to those costs. It was also a humanitarian trip, and at that point, there wasn't a company to go after. Like, you, you're not going to 
So that wasn't an option. And then finally, there's nothing that's uh, prohibiting the families themselves from selling their vouchers a year from now. So we would have been the broker of those vouchers. But if I have a voucher and I decide the following year that I can't use it, why can't they sell that voucher? If we could sell it, they could sell it. If it's a transferable voucher, they could do that. So it, it might be possible for them to recoup their costs next year if their student doesn't want to go on the trip by selling the voucher to a kid that does want to go on the trip. Um, so those are my three points. That's it. Anybody else have some comments? Casey Rooney School Board. I just want to thank Rita again. Um, re re reiterate what Karen and Lisa both said. The amount of hours and the work that you and Prentice and everyone has put into this is greatly appreciated. It really is. Um, but I, I think by my comments earlier, you can see that I'm not supportive of this particular motion. Um, I am uncomfortable using taxpayer dollars to purchase vouchers at this particular point. Jim Batson, VP. I also, I, I believe the total number for all the trips canceled was north of a million dollars exposure for all the families. Correct. Yeah, so Rita, the, the, you That's know, I, I. Just to be clear, because uh, this is being recorded, I don't want anybody to get confused. That was the number we That saw. was for all trips, yeah. all all exposure for all our families. But to know the what Rita, what Dr. Fisher, what. Uh, you know, our our district has been able to do to to minimize that uh, that impact for so many families um, is very uh, very welcome. Um, I guess at this point uh, we've discussed this a lot. Um, I think I know which way this is going, and I don't know that you know if somebody would like to table this and have more discussion, that's great. Um, or we could take a vote and see where we go from here. Anyone well, have we have a, made the motion? Was there a second? There was a there motion was. and a second. Okay. So if anyone has wants to motion uh, make a motion to table this, um, you know, I'm. We can hear that now. Otherwise, we'll take a vote. Okay. Hearing none. Let's. Uh, no more comments. No more questions. Let's take a vote. Lonstead. No. Rooney? No. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Grudy? Aye. Hessel? No. Huber? Aye. All right. Motion fails. 4 3. Yep. Okay. Okay, so next. Wait, wait, wait. Motion no. passes. No. Don, Don, what were you? I didn't hear nay. you. Nay. Nay? Nay. Yeah. nay. Okay. Oh, I, th nay. I heard I. My, nay. I'm a nay then. <laughs> I, that's what I thought too. But, okay. Knows. Well, let's clarify. Right, Kevin, you're, Kevin, you're an I or you are yes or no? I'm a nay. Okay, so it's 5 2. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's okay. talk about next steps on this one then. I, I would assume we're going to go ahead then and inform the parents that they're going to get a voucher, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, Rita, go ahead. Rita Fisher, curriculum. Yes, we have um, an agreement uh, from Rustic Pathways to share with families that we will share, and it will offer that voucher, and um, it will uh, it specifies that there are three seniors that will receive a refund, um, and other students will receive a voucher. Okay. Okay. So and that's Guatemala trip that yeah, company has already communicated. The parents are unhappy with this decision. I don't think there's anything else to talk about. I don't want to waffle on this. I don't really want to waffle. I think we've discussed it. Yeah, to everybody's yeah. point, we've discussed it a lot. The decision's made. Move on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And thank you for all. Um, Every one of the parents objects. I really don't want to come back and say the parents are upset. Let's reconsider this. I don't think yeah. that's the only way to do this. No. Yeah. I mean, I think Agreed. You, I think thank you. you. And, and, and I'm just glad that we're able to go back to the parents and say, look, this is, this is where we are, and this is, this is the reality, so they can move on with whatever their decision is going to be made. And, and we're coming back then with a lot. I mean, I yep. think. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it is, it, it's had full, the whole piece has had not only full consideration, but, you know, Rita's really hundreds and hundreds of hours. Lenheim's has worked on part of this uh, with Rita and, uh, you know, multiple very deep, good conversations with all of you. So uh, any of us could look at any community member, any parent and say, look, this has had the full weight of the district. It's had all of our attention, mine, Rita's, yours, um, and uh, this is where we ended up. And, you know, uh, it's, um, and that's fine, you know, where we ended up. So, okay. Yep. All right. Well, thank you. Yep. Thanks. Uh, one more item on the uh, PMP, and that's the employment of employees. These were uh, 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 a small number of employees um, uh, proposed to hire for this uh, coming year that were brought in after the um, committee meeting. So, and Jim, uh, Jim, on on one of these, um, since this recommendation. Um, Daniel Bush has um, agreed to a full-time position at another school. Okay. So we need, um, Carol has said that we need a motion to strike item 4EII number one from uh, employment of employees. So he, he took a full-time and we're happy for him to take a full-time position. He's a good guy and um, don't fault him at all. So we need a motion to strike item 4EII number one. So so move. Second. Okay. Do, do we have to vote on that or we're just? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can we have a roll call, please? Uh, Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Okay, that motion passes. We wish Thank Daniel you. the best. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no, that's not a problem. So now we need a uh, motion for the uh, remaining uh, three items on the employment of employees, item uh, 4E. So moved. Second. Okay, any further comments or questions? Roll call, please. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Grudy. Grudy. Aye. Hassel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Rooney. Hey. Aye. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't want to okay. miss Casey. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you. That motion passes. Um, and thanks again for everybody for their uh, their patience and uh, and willingness to work through the what, what turned out to be a tough uh, agenda here for the PMP. So yeah, uh, thank you. I'll pass it back to Pat. Okay, facilities and finance, Chairperson Huber. All right. Uh, thanks, Pat, and thanks, uh, Chairperson Batson, for uh, navigating through that. That was, that was a challenge. Uh, so <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, we have a few items on the agenda. We're going to go very quickly because I believe we've talked about looking at them. Dan, we've talked about all of these in the committee meeting yes Evan Huber school board yes. yes I see him nodding yes Dan is nodding so yes. the first thing we're going to talk about or I'm looking for motions for the resolutions to transfer uh, amounts between funds Dan has gone over this with us so the first resolution is authorizing a transfer from the education fund into the operations and maintenance fund uh, as presented it's not no, not yet. It's, a, it's there. No, it's it's there. So what we what we talked about is this is something we'll bring in June, due to the okay. nature of these online meetings to give Daniel Stanley business. really the public trying to give them more notice that at the June meeting we have to have a hearing for this particularly this resolution. Um, okay, uh, you have to have a hearing, so we'll do that at the June meeting, and just kind of a, another public thing. The working cash you could just do it now, but. We decided to wait and have oh, everything yeah, done in come on. So this is just an FYI to the public. All right, just quickly for the record, then read it into the record what these resolutions are. Real quick, what they exactly do. Take a uh, the first one moves $6 million from our Ed Fund to our O&M Fund in order to help pay for those big construction projects that are one done at, you know, virtually done at, 
LHS and the other ones that are, you know, under, pro under progress right now, that's the chance for the cash to actually pay our capital projects fund that's been paying this uh, month after month. The second resolution is working cash. It's another transfer, but the legal term you have to use is an abatement. It just means that it's essentially a transfer uh, of uh, that one was, I believe, Five seven. Five million. Um, five million uh, that transferred to the capital directly into the capital projects fund. It's an abatement directly into that. Okay. Third one. There's Dan, no third one. Oh, it's we had something in the materials. No, so those were the two for A. Okay, you want to talk about that? I mean, again, in, in the materials, in the meeting materials, we have uh another resolution which i guess is that b yes okay you want to go does anybody have any questions on those two transfers no no okay dan you want to talk about b yeah, b and c are basically the same thing uh it's an it, this is an annual resolution to transfer the interest that was accrued into those funds into the okay. debt service fund is b and then the working cash fund is c to transfer those uh to to the the education fund is what we transfer so we we do that on a typical basis to not let those the interest build up in those funds. Uh, we can transfer those in the funds to actually use the money. All right, great. Again, we talked about these extensively at the Finance Committee meeting, so thanks for going quickly through them, Dan. Want to move on to change order? Uh, we need approval. We need authorization for those two resolutions, the can interest transfer ones. Okay, yes. sounds we, we can do those then. Uh, may I have a motion? I'll we'll move to uh, direct uh, 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 authorize a uh, transfer of interest from the debt service to the ed fund. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Mark, any questions on that? All right, Carol, you want to call it? Our Michael. Hi. Grudy. Essel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstead? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Okay. And I'll uh, make the motion for the second one, uh, authorizing the transfer of interest from working cash to the Ed Fund. Second. Aye. I second. Thanks, Lisa. All right. Questions? All right. Carol? Grudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstead? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Dan, for shepherding me through there. All right. The uh, most dreaded word in construction is change orders. Dan, you want to talk about change orders in Burnett Hills? Yep. So this is a change order for uh, $65,984 that requires board approval. That's not something that Prentice nor I can sign for this project as a reminder. So this is in the, uh, where the, um, where the classroom addition attaches to the existing structure. Um, there's a special ed room there uh, that was reconfigured uh, to allow for the little offices. Um, as we discussed, and so this is the change order uh, in order to accomplish that. Mark, Our, anything to clarify on that? No, that's a perfect exploration there, Dan. Well, look at, look at that. And again, All right, get, so that's it. Pat Grudy, president. All right, any other comments, questions on the $65,984 change order? Uh, request, seeing none, we have a motion to approve the change order as presented. So moved. So moved. All right. Second. Thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, Carol? Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Grudy. We're just anxious to get the uh, thing going. That's why we jump on it. Yeah. <laughs> Is Kevin frozen? I think Kevin might be frozen. Am I, am I out? There you are. There you are. There we are. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
Uh, I, uh, yes, of course. Yes. Change order. Love it. Wonderful. Right. Kevin Huber's school board. All right. Uh, fee refunds. Dan. Daniel Stanley Business. This is a proposal to refund approximately 25% of the parking fees that students and families paid for the full year to roughly represent the portion, the 25% of the year that they are unable to access that benefit and will not have the opportunity to access that benefit in the future. Okay. Again, the side was up. Sorry, Lisa. Go ahead. I think you were going to ask the same thing I was. Go ahead, Kevin. No, no, no. Go ahead, Lisa. I, I defer to you on that one. I, sometimes I move too quick. Go ahead, please. <laughs> Just remind us of the total amount that's being refunded, please. Yep. So the total amount being refunded would be about $27,467.87, which represents about 25% of what we received. Some families paid, you know, for second semester only, so they're going to get half of that second semester. Um, but yeah, $27,467.87. All right. Thanks, Lisa, for getting that number out there. May I have a motion to approve the refunding of student parking fees for for 25% or not to exceed $27,467.87. Removed. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments? Dan, I'm not hamstring. I'm not tying your hands on by being specific, not to exceed in there, am I? Are you okay yeah, with that? Good question. Sure. If they find one more person, it's going to kind of mess that up. We could just do the 25 percent and call it a day, or whatever the percentage is. Don't you think, Dan? Yeah, I'm, yeah I think 25 percent makes it easier. Just and so it's more of the FYI. We, I mean, it's 27,467 is what we're anticipating. So. Yeah, I just worry that there might be one more person they find or something, and then all of a sudden we have. But so either way, would the would the maker of the motion uh, accept a friendly amendment to make it just twenty five percent? Yes. All right. Okay, that's good. Second I'm person, okay. second. Okay with that? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and amend. Carol can amend the motion just to say twenty five percent. Okay. Huber. Aye. Lundstead. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. All right. Evan Huber School Board. Wonderful. Now the next item is something I think the entire board is it's very actually supportive of. So you want to tee this one up for us, Dan? This is the summer food. Yep. So this is the uh, proposal from Chartwells to run to continue the summer or to continue the food service program through the summer. Uh, so the rates are there um, for breakfast at $1.75 for breakfast and then a lunch at $3.10. Uh, they've served approximately 600 of each, they're saying each week. So uh, what they'll, they'll actually bill us for actual meals that are, that are made and served. Um, it'll run starting next week. So the week of Memorial Day through August. We did through August because it, whenever we get back to school. So if we have a slightly delayed school, we don't know. But normally, it would all else being equal, it would go through August 10th. Daniel Stanley Business. Sorry. Um, it really would go through August 10th, which would be 12 weeks. Um, and so if you use that those numbers, so if you roughly use the 600, you know, the for breakfast, 600 for lunch at those rates, it would cost approximately $34,920, or think $35,000 for those meals. Um, in addition, uh, there is a special summer food program um, through the state that's ultimately through the U.S. Department of uh, Agriculture. Um, I believe the, I believe it's the, I think it's the USDA, um, where we can get a reimbursement for the breakfast and lunch uh, meals. And if you see there on that proposal, it's the other. And if you happen to notice, those other reimbursements are higher than our actual cost. So um, under this system, um, it would cost us approximately $35,000 for the meals, and we would end up receiving approximately $46,000 from the state, which is passed on through the government. So um, normally the, for the programs 
it's a little bit weird, um, right? Uh, but um, one, the program recognizes that there are sometimes additional costs to programs other than strictly the meal costs. Um, so, you know, we've got, we've got some folks that are potentially putting in more hours to help accomplish this. And so that can help offset our costs in that way. That's not really reflected in these prices or necessarily something that chart rules would have to do. Um, <clears throat> but also probably in a normal, in a normal circumstance, the prices for the meals wouldn't be quite as low because they, there would be much more maybe options available or something like that. So this is the program that they're presenting us with. And uh, the way it would work is we wouldn't actually get billed for this until August. So, you know, troubles would keep track of it because normally we, normally we're done billing now and then they don't bill us again until August. And that's really how their system is set up for us. So they will defer billing on us for this until August. And, you know, we'll put in for the meals as we, you know, every month as we do. And we may not, we may not who knows when we're going to actually get that money. Because sometimes our money from the state is a bit delayed. You know, sometimes we have to wait a few months. So they actually, the, when the cash is going to come, it's all really, ideally would be later in the fall. So. All right. All right, great. So uh, any other questions of Dan or staff? I right, seeing that we have a motion to approve the summer food service. Yeah, Pat. Where do they actually? I don't. Where do they actually do the work? They're going to do it at LHS because yes. Vernon Hills cafeteria is under construction. Okay. All right. Other questions? All right. Seeing that, we have a motion to approve the summer food service program uh, to allow the administration to administer a summer food service program as presented. So I'm delighted to move to do that. Second. All right. And I also heard, I think, Karen in there, too. So, uh, Carol, if you can Jason. work your way through all those. Uh, I think we'd all like to move and second this one. Yes. Uh, yes. So, no other questions on this one. You want to call the vote? Lundstead. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Asso. Aye. Huber. Aye. All right. So going from a fun one to a more challenging one, Dan, you want to talk about the uh, transportation contract agreement and what you all are proposing? Daniel Stanley Business. Uh, sure. As discussed in our committee meeting a week ago, uh, this is an amendment to our contract with, with Lakeside uh, to pay them 85% of our normal charges from the period of March 16th through April 30th. Um, with that, back then, March, in the middle of March, we thought we were closed. The anticipation is maybe we'd be open maybe in a few weeks. We told them, please hang on to everybody. We need to be ready to go. When that got delayed till April 30th, we then again asked them, please be ready to go May 1st. Uh, and so we asked them to keep everybody on to keep that going. Uh, once we were told in April that the school year would be done, uh, we agreed with them that starting May 1st, uh, their drivers would be furloughed and that from the May 1st period uh, through the rest of the month would be a 39% proration in order for them to uh, maintain fixed costs, some administrative stuff, um, and office staff that are continuing to work. So that essentially is, is the proposal, the amendment, okay. yeah. And did they come to us or did we go to them? Do they know about this? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, we, we, we were the ones that asked them immediately when this all went down to make sure that our drivers are still there ready to go. Um, they, so that was, you know, everyone was in a whirlwind for probably about two or three weeks there. Um, and then we started talking with the contractor in terms of, okay, so we want them to stay. So then how much are, how much are we paying? And so we've been talking about that for the last month and a half. And so, yeah, they know very well. I mean, this, this, this was drafted by Lynn Himes and um, presented to them. They have, there's similar arrangements with all the districts that are looking at this. Um, it's not going to be exactly word for word the same, uh, not everybody's agreeing to pay the same amount of rates and stuff like that. So, but this is this is our amendment uh, to that contract. It is um, similar to Seedall's doing a similar thing with this company. 
So, Dan, how much money are we actually paying them for this? Just round numbers. Uh, roughly, regular ed is is a hundred. Was uh, uh, sorry. Hold on. Give me a second. Three hundred thousand. Isn't it three million a year? It, it's it's up there for sure. Um, so it's quarter million dollars a month. Round numbers. That'd be very round, but you're not probably out of the ballpark. But I I'm hesitant to just throw out a number for you. I don't want to. You know what I mean. I don't want to kind of throw you the wrong number either way. Um, so uh, this is so for reference, our bill in February for regular ed was about one hundred thirty-six thousand, and then our bill that our prorated bill then for April is about one hundred twenty-eight thousand. Uh, but there's less days in February, so it's not apples to apples exactly right. Um, and then special ed, uh, Pat Grudy, president. It's all right. Dan, it's, it's all right. I mean, order of magnitude, we're in the 200, 250, $300,000 number, right? To pay these guys because they were holding the service we didn't use. Yes. All right. I'm going to. Clear my own mind. This is the one I struggle with because now we're in unemployment. Um, if we, if this is really because we told them we want you guys to hold the service for us, then I have one point of view. If they came to us and said, "Hey, we can't we can't do this if you don't cover us," I have another point of view. So, which of those two is it? I I now can I, I can show there. I would I, my honest answer would be there just that happened differently. In different districts, I can tell you with absolute certainty that in this district, we were the first ones to reach out and say, "We want you to. We 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 need you to hold on and be ready to go um, for school to resume." So that that happened uh, for sure was an email I, I could point you to that happened whatever that was, and then so there were kind of two variations of that. Honestly, the second one, I can't remember if it was a phone call. Um, to be honest with Lakeside or was something that I documented. Um, okay. But you're, and then, you're, and then once, once they announced school was over, it, everyone knew like, all right, the drivers are going to be furloughed. Um, yeah. But they're still asking us to cover a pretty substantial amount of money of their fixed costs. Pat Grudy president. So just, uh, but just I yeah, I don't want to minimize that. It's not a small amount of money. I, okay. yeah, I'm not, well, I would not say more that. Than the money we voted down already, that's for sure. Um, I will say, so it sounds to me like we really encourage them to still be available. And so even if they were planning to get rid of their people, they would have stopped because we told them not to. We, I would say we more than encouraged. I don't want it demanded is too strong of a word, but we, we wanted them ready to go. Because we honestly, at the time, we believed that we were likely going to have to do that. You know, maybe there was, I know there were people at the time that just assumed we were going to be done for the year, but be, because the state did not tell us that we could not operate under that assumption at that time. And so we had the two modifications. One was, you know, at, when it got extended to April 30th, we said, okay, we need to do this a few more weeks, keep it going. And then once in April, we were told school year is done. We said, okay, this is a different, this is a different conversation now. And then we agreed that May 1st would be, kind of the round date to agree to furlough the drivers. Okay, then two last very quick questions. One, there's a, there's a language in here about us getting reimbursed for this, right? Uh, what's the chance we get re we get the Sorry. What's the chance we won't get the money? What's a chance we don't get the money? Um, We're planning to get reimbursed for a service we didn't get because we, we wanted to keep the service. But, I mean, I don't know how they're going to – whoever's supposed to reimburse us, I'm not sure they're going to agree that that was a good thing to do. It's the state. So part of the reason for this amendment too is the state telling us as this as this kind of settled out and everybody was asking this question. I mean, everybody, every district was asking these same questions. Like, if everybody's doing this, like, are we going to be get reimbursed? Because for some for some districts, that's a significant amount of money, and it's no small amount of money here. Yeah. And so the guidance that we were told explicitly, and I could point you, I don't have it ready for it, but I could point you what what is be said is they're looking for a written agreement to such effect, which is exactly what this is. 
so that essentially what it, what it boils down to is we, we submit our numbers to ISBE. They're going to reimburse us. How much they reimburse us, I don't know. We're definitely going to get something back. But right now, what we actually get back will be totally dependent on whatever happens with the state budget. But I guarantee you we will get something back. Um, right now, no one knows how much it is, but it is reimbursable. So it, it is definitely potentially get reimbursed. And when I see a reimbursed, I do not mean 100%. So in a perfect world, it'll never get reimbursed 100%. Regular ed is a pretty low percentage. Special ed is much higher. Um, in terms of the, the, the reimbursement from the state. And um, yeah, so we would definitely get reimbursed something. And so essentially what they would have to do is audit us. They audit us every few years. They would audit us. Part of the documentation they would request for this time period um, would be this agreement, which we would furnish to them. So. All right, but in section three, so if we, let, let's just make it up. If, if we pay them 100,000 bucks here in section three, does that assume we're gonna get 100,000 from ISBE or not? No. Jim Batson, VP. We're going to, we potentially would get the amount that we would normally get reimbursed if the bus service was running, correct? Yeah, but we're only paying them 39% of what we would normally pay. So we would only, we would only want 39%. We, yeah. So the, the question of whether, the question is not what you get reimbursed. The question is if, if what, whether it counts as reimbursable. So they put together the bucket of money that is considered reimbursable, call it a million dollars. And then what they actually reimburse us is based on a formula that they figure out taking into account how wealthy the district is, how much money it was appropriated from the, from the state government uh, and all those kind of things. And that's the amount that we actually get reimbursed. Okay. So to, to clarify section three, what that means is we're going to pay the bus company as long as ISB says it was a reimbursable expense, the bus company keeps our check. And we get whatever we get from it, is it? Which is what everybody's assumption is, for, including the state. That's what the state told us. So. Okay. And last but not least, how will we know if they get anything from anybody else? Section two. Frankly, how do we know um, they didn't furlough their drivers anyway? Uh, uh, well, um, how, how would we know? Um, um, we... Because again, we're acting. We, no, as no I, I, I know. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think honestly for you. Um, we can ask them for proof, whatever they can furnish to us. Uh, I know another thing that we definitely could do is when we get back, is ask the drivers uh, what happened because we've got, we've got some drivers that have been working with us for a long, long time. Yeah. You know. Um, I mean, like I said so, the other night, I just don't want to be taken advantage of here because you know I can understand they would furlough their drivers because they don't have any work. I not like these people normally to pay drivers when they're not working. Maybe this was the one time they decided to do that because they were getting money. But like I said, I don't feel like we need to be the unemployment agency too. I don't think we get property tax dollars from our residents to pay unemployment tax or unemployment wages. Pat Grudy, president. All right, but if you say we, this all happened because we really told them we need to make sure we got bus service, I'm okay with it. If that that is that is I'm absolutely okay. what happened. Daniel Stanley business. That is absolutely what happened. Um, okay. I, up up until you know really the May first date, right? Because that was the date we we all agree, we knew in April that starting May first we we are not going to need them ready to go, and so that's when they were furloughed, and that's what the the smaller reimbursement is the thirty nine percent for the we, the few weeks in May. All right, I'm done. Other comments on this uh, topic? I have a quick question. Um, Lynn Times drafted this. Don correct? Carmichael School yes. Board. Um, so under the CARES Act, there's a directive, a uh, section titled Continued Payments to Employees that addresses who we have to pay. And it says, the act states that the local educational agency who receives grant funds, so we receive some grant funds from the federal and state governments, quote, shall to the greatest extent practicable continue to pay its employees and contractors during the period of any disruptions or closures related to coronavirus. So my question is, while Lim was drafting this agreement, was he in the back of his mind knowing that the CARES Act directs us to do this, if we can? Daniel Stanley Business. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm, not on, I'm not following your question. In Lynn's mind, 
which none of us can know right now, was he drafting this because he knew that we were in some way compelled to do this because we received federal and state funding? No, no, no one, no one is under any impression that we are compelled to do this. We are, there is nothing okay. legally compelling us to do this. No. Okay. Pat Grudy, president. Although Don, your point, and I think it's a valid one, is that in your read of the CARES Act, we probably should be doing this, correct? Don Carmichael, school board. I think that what the CARES Act was trying to do was to spread the costs out. What they saw was uh, school districts that had already taken money in, and this was a way for school districts to help to pay for anybody in their supply chain, uh, as opposed to sending out their $1,200 checks or you know whatever it was that they were doing from the other side. Uh, they knew that they had governmental agencies that had already collected money that could distribute it differently. So I think that what the CARES Act is trying to do is to ask school districts, if they can, to continue to pay their employees. Yeah, and I, I maybe this isn't exactly what you're asking, but I, but I'm not at all. I'm not convinced yet that we'll be able to access any monies from the CARE Act. Um, the the state just released the grant system or the application system, so I haven't really yeah. had a chance look at it yet it might be tied to title one which is not something we participate so uh i don't know if we did i i'm pretty sure it would be in the fifty thousand range ish if we could get money you know just just to give a point of reference so i don't i don't know well enough what you're referencing and to know if that applies only if we receive money from the cares act or if it applies regardless so i don't know well, I, I don't know either. I, so, I wondered, you know, are we being compelled to do this yeah, in any way? Yeah, I would be. Oh, okay. No. No. Uh, yeah. And what I, what I heard from, from, from Don is, yes, there is this language that says we should do our best to, to, to compensate people. I know districts that have their own bus drivers, that their district employees are pretty much obligated to pay those employees through the end of the year, just like they are all their, their employees. Um, which is which is what we're doing here, and if the bus drivers were our employees, we would we would be compelled through to the end of the year, us. right? All right. Other comments on this item? Kevin Huber, school board. All right. Seeing none, I believe we need a motion to approve the amendment to the contract for transportation services as presented. So moved. Thank you. Second. 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 All right. Thank you all. Uh, any further discussion? All right. Seeing none, Carol. Rooney. You said Rooney, right? I see Rooney. Sorry. Thank you. I. <laughs> sorry. Jackson. I. Carmichael. I. Rudy. I. Hessel. I. Huber. I. Lundstedt. Aye. Kevin Huber, school board. All right. The next item on the finance agenda is the revised weight room proposal as has been going on over the last year. We've moved the wrestling room. We're expanding the weight room. And this is one of the final pieces of that weight room puzzle. And that is the equipment. This was discussed at the finance meeting. I believe it's 80000 Eighty thousand five hundred and three dollars, right? And ninety-two cents. And ninety-two cents. Thank you. Yes, ninety-two is important. Uh, do we uh, any other comments regarding the, what was discussed at the finance committee? Nope. Okay. Seeing none, maybe I have a motion to approve the LHS revised weight room proposal as presented. So moved. Thank you. I have a second. 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 Thanks, Don. Okay. Another discussion? Again, nothing. Carol? Jackson. Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Grudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. All right. I think one of the final things on our committee report was the with all the construction going on, we need to clean up. And so we have some cleaning of the right Vernon Hills and 
Are we doing anything at Libertyville, or is it just all Vernon Hills cleaning? Dan? Mark? Mark? All Vernon, this is all Vernon Hills. All Vernon Hills. So about all that good stuff we're doing at Vernon Hills, we bid out the cleaning, and the contract was awarded to Data Center Services for 18605 I have a motion to approve the contract as the recommendation as presented, excuse me. So moved. Thank you, Lisa. Can I have a second? Second. Thanks, Jim. All right, Carol. R. Michael. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstead. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. All right, anybody else have any finance stuff, facility stuff? We, we should probably uh, have some kudos to Mark and his staff there for saving us some money on that last bid um, because they're doing a bunch of that work in-house. Sure. Yeah, great point, uh, Don. I think I bad me. I should have uh, said something. We talked about that at the Finance Committee meeting, so thank you, 100%. Hey, Dan, I also want to thank you for just the financial package in general. I mean, a lot of that's really gotten clearer and clearer over the last year and a half or so, and I really haven't mentioned it, but just the way you're displaying the investments and summarizing the big ticket expenses and stuff like that makes it really easy to look at what's going on. So I appreciate that. Yeah, we got I'm, just glad, I'm just glad you look at it. That's helpful. <laughs> I, I looked at the investment stuff a little more than I usually do this month, and I liked your graph that showed all the near short term and long term stuff. I'd like to get three and a half percent on my money. Can you find me a way to do that? Uh, sure. Go back three years ago. Yeah, <laughs> I noticed that and kind of, kind of burst in my bubble when I saw that, like 2016 or 2018, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. All right, I believe that that may be it for finance. Again, we probably should throw kudos out to all the staff, Brennis. Rita, Dan, Mark, everybody who's uh, helped us work our way through this this virus. Bryant, uh, thank you all. I, I don't think it goes mm -hmm. without saying we know you are all working tirelessly. And I, we, we know that uh, you thank the teachers and building staff for us, but we need to thank you all. So thank yeah. you for that. So I'll turn it back to Pat. All right, good job. Um, Thanks, Kevin. Last but not least, Seedle. Secretary. Yeah, just real quick. We have our quarterly governing board meeting uh, coming up June 5th, which I think we're actually having live. I'm not quite sure how they're going to do that, but from what I can tell, we're going to actually physically be there. Um, the budget will be presented, uh, the budget uh, that we will be uh, voting on, uh, the proposed budget, uh, 58813300 leaving a fund balance of $14 million, um, it's, it's considerably less than it is this year. They've got a couple things going on there. Um, many schools are taking back programs. There's a decreased enrollment and staffing going on, um, partly because they've frozen admissions, but, you know, for all kinds of reasons. Um, they actually have changed the tuition increase that they were recommending from 3% down to 2%. Um, for all of us. Uh, this is the year that the IDEA, IDEA funding is no longer going to flow through CEDAL to us, but it's going to come directly to us. And so we'll be, if I'm saying this in the right way, Dan, you'll be writing the grants to get that money. And so that's affecting, you know, just the way everything's been uh, done for all these different years. So I know that Dan and Kelly are both super on top of this. They've gone to meetings about, you know, how, how to handle and transition that shift as well as the, uh, virtual webinars that we had uh, going through the budget in, at the end of April. Um, another thing we'll be changing is the Articles of Joint Agreement. They've been amended to reflect the change in the IDEA funding. Um, so it's going to be presented as a second reading, which we'll be voting on. So it's kind of a, uh, they need a bigger majority at this meeting. I think I meant, when I thought I was going to be out of town during this, I several months ago, I I think I just threw it out there as somebody's, you know, really going to need to step in there. But um, I'm not going to be in Greece. I'm here. So uh, anyway, I'm. Uh, we'll be going to that meeting, and just wanted to keep you updated on that. Okay. Good job, Cam. All right. Anybody have anything else? Pat Grudy, President. Uh, one last question to John and Tom for graduations under the various scenarios, is there anything in particular in the way of support you need for us? Let's say if we go to a virtual graduation. John Gil Yao, principal. Um, 
I guess my only question was relative to uh, speakers from the board. Our goal would be to make a virtual graduation in terms of speaking short, just in terms of trying to limit that so that we keep uh, engagement uh, as we move into reading names. Um, so we've got to figure out kind of who's speaking when and didn't know if we had board participation to speak or not. I think we do, John. Lisa, I think, is raising her hand because she's going to speak at Vernon Hills. Lisa Hassel School Board. Just a very short, short, short speech. That's perfect. And who's, and who's at Libertyville? Who's speaking at Libertyville? Pat? Me. Casey. Karen. Casey. Casey. Okay, great. Yeah. Also a very short speech. All right. Okay, if there's anything else you need, let us know. Message received, short. Hey, Pat. Just Lee Superintendent. Just, just to that end again, re remember our plan here based on feedback from, you know, our uh, two school communities is that we've got the dates, you know, kind of pegged out in July. In early July, we'll have to make a decision along with, the Sears Center in this case, and you know whatever we can do at Vernon Hills, and um, John and Tom, you know, are working on that Plan B. So if we make that decision in early June, and we cannot have, you know, what we would view as a traditional graduation, then we'll pivot to those alternatives. Okay, so if you ask those questions, that's kind of where we sit right now uh, with that. Okay. Okay. All right, anything else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Right, good night, everybody. Thanks a lot. Good night. Right, good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Bye bye.